Chevrolet GMC Studios in the heart of Lincoln, America. Here's 93.7 at tickets, Jake Sorensen. Did seem kind of meh. And Steve Sippel. Surprisingly good. This is Early Break with Sip and Jake. Sponsored by Gaina Trucking. Good morning. Happy Thursday to you, Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen. Early break, full show ahead. Good luck keeping my attention. The Open Championship is on. Oh. Oh, the TVs are not on. They might be on eventually here, but uh, it's up and running. There's already guys done for the day. That's amazing. It is 6.02, and there are several players that are already done for the day That's amazing. at St. Andrews That's in amazing. Scotland. How, do you ever turn the TVs on? No, I should. I don't see them on ever in here. I think I will turn them on uh, during this upcoming break. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I will. Let's, let's have something We can watch new. some golf in here. <laughs> because there was at one point years ago that you you just liked the fact. You told me, I like the TVs being on. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. You said it makes me feel comfortable. Yeah. Why don't we have them on? Can we? I don't know. I think we should make that change. You want, you want to make the TVs yeah. go back o- on? Over the break. When we go to break, let's do it. Okay. And then got, tomorrow morning, let's have them on. I got to make sure I can navigate these things because they've changed. I mean, yeah, I sound like an old. You know, yeah, that's right. I'm I, Hey, I'm not. I have never claimed to be great with technology ever. Never said that. We have. Like, oh, this Gus is here. This Roku stuff, you know, the streaming stuff, it, it changes all the time. Yeah. I've so we've had We've had several changes to these TVs, and so I don't even know what we're at right now with if we have YouTube TV or what the heck. We so have. you don't come walking in sometimes and just turn on the TV. No. Here? Yeah. No. Uh-uh. Gus, you'd know how to do this, right? <laughs> turn, it's just it just sounds straight pathetic when you put it like that. Hey Gus, do you know how to turn on the TV? I mean, I am 95 years old now apparently. That's what it feels like. You've already made fun of my shirt this morning. I like it. Mm. I like it. It's a good shirt. No, you can't just Absolutely. I, 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 I come on. What you said that's a funny shirt was the first thing you said. I, <laughs> I, I didn't said mean it. By the end of the show, you're going to think, oh, that's a pretty cool shirt. I didn't shirt. mean it. This is a new shirt. It's definitely new. Yeah, I, haven't, I, I got this like within the month, yeah. basically. Yeah. You it's want, di- it's different, different than what you usually The backstory wear. quickly on this. Yeah. I, I did not get it because I was wanting to buy the shirt. I was playing golf in Kansas City and I ate oh, lunch yeah. and I spilled a bunch of spaghetti on my shirt, on a white shirt. Oh, that's what we With 18 discussed. holes more to go. So I had to buy this shirt instead. We discussed this shirt. We did? Yes. That day? I think so. Was, uh, that is not an inexpensive shirt. No, it was. That's right. Yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah, I know. I had to pay some money for yeah, this you sucker. Did. Yeah. You did. I remember that. Yep, it, I, I remember when I we had the conversation. You'd forgotten. It was eyebrow raising. <laughs> <laughs> How costly that shirt is. What brand is it? I don't. Even, I have no. I don't. Don't ask me these questions. I don't even know. I have no idea what brand of anything I have on today. Okay, so at the break we will attempt to turn yes, on the TV. That's right. Uh, for those who are curious, because I people out there they want to watch the they want to know what the golf update is. Go ahead, is. do it, do it. Uh, right now, the leader is a man named Cameron Young from America. If you remember that name, it might it might sound familiar because he was in contention at the PGA Championship where Justin Thomas beat Will Zalatoris in the playoff. He, he double bogey, I think, the whole late to, to miss out on the playoff. Cameron Young did, as, as did Mito Pereira. Uh, but you got guys like Bryson DeChambeau, who's you know a, a, a live defector. He is uh, three under par. He's four back. Cameron Smith, who nearly won the Masters, is three back at four under par. Tiger Woods tees off at 9 a.m. today, our time. So that's normal time. You don't have to wake up and you know at 3 a.m. to watch him play. But a lot of guys are on the course. Uh, Rory McIlroy, if you're curious with him, four and a par through seven. Blazing hot start for Rack McIlroy. DeChambeau, if he were to win, would it be a big, I mean, would there be a big angle there, a big story, well, a well, controversial story? Well, anybody from the Live that, that wins is a big story. The Live Tour. Yeah. Because this this might be, I mean, they don't, I don't know how it's going to change, but this might be their last chance to play in the Open Championship. Hmm. We will see what the rules are going to next year because there's no they couldn't put up the rules that quickly. They'll think about it and say, do we want this to be the DP World Tour, the the PGA Tour, and the Live Tour, or is it, it going to keep it the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour? 
Did you uh, things to learn there? Did you have? Did you pick somebody to win? This? I did. Oh, <laughs> in your pool. As you know, I typically do very poorly. I, I did win two straight weeks. We turned our new leaf on accuracy on the show, which that was just luck. I picked Tommy Fleetwood, who has been a long time. Mm, contender, one of those guys who should have won a major by now, but maybe missed his window. Tommy Fleetwood is one over par through 13. That means he's eight <coughs> strokes off the lead in the first round, which doesn't set up well for his chances to win the tournament. Now, things can change, but that's where we're at now. So there, there's your yeah. open championship update. Well, there will be more updates because yes. we'll have it on TV. Yes, soon. and uh, people want to hear that throughout the day. So there you go. That's your early update. We will update people on how smoothly... <laughs> the tv process transpired <laughs> if it's smooth at all we'll see 402-464-5685 call or text as always so we mentioned sip that uh, yesterday and today are big 12 media days down in arlington texas mm -hmm. yeah I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of things to get down from yesterday that were were mentioned uh, by coaches and, and everybody talking but i thought some of the in most interesting stuff, maybe even kind of funny stuff, was from the new commissioner, the incoming commissioner, Brett Yormark. Said he, he, part of his message at Media Days was he wants to appeal more to the 18 to 24 year age demographic and he wants to be kind of young and hip with the conference. How would you I don't know. describe how a conference, how, what could, what could football do to, to be hip? I mean, it's already pretty hip to begin with, isn't it? Wouldn't you think that football should already appeal to that demographic of 18 to 24 years old? I don't know. Is he talking about television broadcast? Television, television. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can definitely. What do you, what do they need to see in a broadcast? Football has been football Just for a long it, would time. Would you please keep an open mind? I would like to know if you're out there listening, would you please keep an open mind? How would you make it? Number one is a is a football broadcast right now not hip and cool. Now, now, what makes it hip and cool? You're asking me this. That seems unappealing to me. <laughs> yeah, me to I ask me. listeners too. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mister. What, what what makes <laughs> what it is more hip, hip and, and cool? cool to I don't you? know. You're trying to incorporate cell phone more. Um, maybe make it the broadcast more like a like I don't know. When you play video games, aren't there certain elements of video games that are that are prominent do you make the broadcast look kind of like a video game in some ways i, I hope not do you incorporate those sort of sounds i mean this <laughs> sounds yeah um <laughs> well do you play like video, video games yeah i used to back you know like, i don't know 20 years ago yeah it, it, there were certain sounds attached to it i've just heard them um like you want the the, the rough tackle sound yeah. involved there <clears throat> You yeah. want everybody mic'd up so you can hear every sound? Not not everybody mic'd up. Now, would you please this is don't this is not an attack on Sipple. This is Brett Yormark's I, yeah, idea. I, yeah, I'm attacking him. You're okay. Right. Um, I'm just thinking about ways to do it. Make the game make the broadcast more hip, make the make the entire enterprise more hip. There's things you can do. Yeah, there's definitely things this you can do. This is per CBS Sports. From yesterday, Brett Yormark again talking yeah. to at Big Ten Big Twelve Media Days. Yormark has flexed his branding muscles to define his vision for the conference. The phrase "young and hip" okay. was at the front of his mind as okay. the conference fights to increase its relevance and market share among the eighteen to twenty-four demographic. He says uh, Yormark emphasized he plans on keeping linear broadcasts at the center of the Big Twelve Central Broadcast Package. Think major networks like CBS, Fox, and ESPN. However, he wants to use other platforms as storytelling tools to expand the league's brand. Like Nickelodeon. Yeah, but they're doing that slime stuff for the Super Bowl. Like they oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't broadcast for yeah. that. Okay. He says, quote, there's an opportunity to nationalize this brand to be more aspirational. Okay. To appeal to youth culture to get younger and hipper. Okay. That is direct quote. Yeah. Those are the things I'll be working on. All right. Aspirational. It's a good buzzword. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's roll that one out. I, that, I, is this is this how you would address your first yeah. media days as, as as a commissioner? Now, Jake, I'm not going to sit over here and shoot down this man's ideas. I mean, he's advanced in this world pretty far. Yes, and he's, he's done it by by being a visionary. He's 55 years old. Yes, he's he, my age. More than a dozen years as the CEO of the Brooklyn Nets. Mm -hmm. 
And then, as you mentioned, two years as a with Rock Nation. Yeah, I'm not gonna get in that. I don't want to do that to him, to to shoot down his vision before it before it's even enacted. That sounded. That I mean, listen, he's talking about things that you and I don't understand, right? Yeah, because we don't go to. I don't know. I don't know what slime is. Well, okay, so Nickelodeon. Yeah. Feel you know, for forever that they 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 like they put like the green slime on stuff. Does that make any sense? You're not helping me. Okay. <laughs> well, what back, you, back when I was a kid, yeah, there was, I forget what it was called, but there was a show that like kids would go on, and if they lost, they would get covered in green slime. Okay. And so that was a big hit with the network, and so now like in the like when they had the Super Bowl broadcast for okay. kids to make it more kid okay friendly that broadcast. When a touchdown was scored, like they'd have these fake cannons in the end zone shooting off slime to celebrate oh, okay. the score, basically. All right. It's that, just all 3D yeah. stuff. Yeah, you're trying to think of what 18 to 18 to 24-year-olds, what would attract them? The slime is not going to be attractive to them. That's for like 10-year-olds, 8-year-olds. Yeah. I don't know what. I'm I don't I don't I'm not really I'm curious listeners what if you yeah. have any ideas of what that how would you appeal a broadcast of a game to 18 to 24 year old kids and without thoroughly unappealing the rest of the people watching I suppose mm -hmm. right well can, can they can they have sort of add-on broadcasts um broadcasts that me and you wouldn't probably watch but could be watched somewhere else you know I don't know well he this is from Brett Yormark, okay. Commissioner, Big 12, starting August 1st. Yeah. Uh, he's already pretty much acting as it, though. Uh, yes. He says, quote, one thing is crystal clear. There is no higher priority than to best position the Big 12 for its upcoming multimedia rights negotiate negotiations. Everything we do must create momentum for these negotiations, as well as building the value of the Big 12 brand and business. Yeah. I mean, they're, the Big 12 is not in a bad situation, not in a terrible situation. It's it's in a better situation than the Pac-12. Um, so, I, yeah, he's just trying to do what he can to enhance the profile. And I think that I think what he's saying makes sense. Now, how do you appeal to 18 to 24 year olds? We haven't answered that question. We, because we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I'm 31. Gus is 19. Yeah, Gus would know. This. That's right in his demographic. Just shake your head. Yes or no. Do you have ideas? Get on the all right, all right. Get him okay. On. Gus is this is for you. You you Gus, our producer, uh, is 19 years old. He is in the demographic that Brett Yormark is trying to reach to make it more interesting, more appealing to that demographic. Gus, hello, good morning. Good morning. All right, so we, we, we need your help here because we are I'm 31, sips 56. We are not in this demographic. I like football the way it is to watch it. What would make it more appealing to you in your 18 to 24 demographic? I think just giving the broadcasters and the fans who are watching more stuff to work with. So, like, that includes miking players up, giving okay. them more behind-the-scenes access. Because, I mean, there's only so much a broadcast and a broadcaster can do mm -hmm. with limited information. There's only so much they can do with the information provided to them. So the way to make it more entertaining is just give them more stuff to work with. Uh, the the mic'd-up stuff is always great when you see it hearing coaches on the sideline, just getting into more than what you just see between like uh, the actual game. There you go. That's a good I idea. Think. Okay. Yeah. My, yeah. Mike, Mike, a few up. more players, mm -hmm. maybe a couple coaches like they do in the USFL, right? They do that in the US. Thank you guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you back in a second. See, that's guys. an idea. That's an idea. And, and again, again, that I don't. I don't think that would be unappealing to anybody watching, right? I don't think that you mic'd up players would be like, "Oh, we gotta appeal, we gotta please the young kids watching no. this," no. and tick off the the older people. I don't think that would tick off the older. People. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not that 18 to 24, but I, that would not bother me to have more mic'd up things. I'd be fine with that. And that, that's kind of been something that that broadcasts have been trying to do more for a while is get more mic'd up players mm -hmm. and coaches yeah <laughs> is that is that where it's gus gus makes a good point there's only so much you can do right and one more thing there you know is. you've seen like tony romo explode as a broadcaster and that's because he he can show you like the he'll draw the play art before the play even happens so he can kind of show you that extra layer okay. like he can see the adjustments quarterbacks and like motions at the line of scrimmage they're making he can kind of show that to you which is an extra level 
you don't usually see. I mean, a lot of times you see analysts explain what just happened, but they don't really get into it like a former quarterback does. Yeah. Are you saying that, that 18 to 24 year olds want to know what's going to happen before it actually happens? Not necessarily, but I think, I mean, <laughs> it's just easy. Just I'm anyone. Just, I'm just saying. I'm not necessarily knows what happens before it's going to happen, but I think anyone, not just 18 to 24 year olds, when you get that extra, extra layer where you have a former player really like discussing like the schematics of it, not just someone telling you kind of what you already saw or what you already sure. know you're seeing adds a lot. I Is think. there anything you could take from a video game and transfer it to a uh, regular broadcast? See, I think you're giving the video games too much credit when, when I play them, uh, it's just, it's a lot like a normal broadcast. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I'm, I, uh, when I worked a big 10 baseball tournament, I met Brandon Godden and worked with him and he's, okay, yeah. he's one of the guys who sure. he's play by play announces. Yeah. yeah. He does play by play on those games and it's, it's pretty similar to real life. I mean, okay. They don't add too much. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, those are ideas. Yeah. Those are ideas. Yeah. I, I bet, I bet your Mark has some good ideas. I'm sure he does because he's got, he's the vision is hip. And young for him, hip and cool. I mean, do you add youth to the broadcast? Uh, like kids? No. Oh, younger broadcasters. Yeah, just much younger broadcasters, like twenty some, early twenty something broadcasters. Would that help? I don't know. There's, they got to. I don't know. I, this is a very, to me, it's a very interesting discussion. Yes, it is. Because I'm, I be, partly because I don't know how you you do it. Okay, and I don't dislike the current broadcasts, so it's it so it's it intriguing to me from that standpoint. Before we get to Derek on the phone, we got another call. Uh, hang on, hang on. Well, this is this is more from Brett Yormark okay. yesterday. Okay, uh, again, I'm, that's what we're discussing. Is Brett Yormark was was at Big Twelve Media Days, and he, he wants to be hip and cool in the conference, and he's got more to say beyond that. Uh, this is from CBS Sports. It says, Your Mark is laser focused on using his branding and marketing background to make the Big 12 attractive as possible as a holistic product. Your Mark is transitioning out of his old job at Rock Nation, take over August 1st. He says, quote, I think when future student athletes are thinking about where they want to go next, as they're making those decisions, I want our brand to be aspirational there yeah. it is again mm -hmm. i want them to say i want to go to the big 12 for all the right reasons and collectively with the group at the conference office our goal is to do just that i'm very excited about it i think there's a real opportunity yeah he said some nice things there. he <laughs> yeah. has to say something aspirational yeah. sip how about that yeah, he has to say oh something. my we've got the yeah, lines are we officially have ideas. jacked. We have ideas. All right, we've got three callers on, but we got to go in order here. Derek, you're up first. You're on early break. Go ahead. Jake, Seth, good morning. Good to hear your voices across the airwaves of southeastern Nebraska this morning. And um, that Brent Yormach, he sounds like a pretty uh, sharp individual. I guess the question I have, and I haven't listened all week, but uh, maybe this has come up before, but isn't this really just primo time? for the Pac-12 and the Big 12 to put their heads together and create a super conference and jumpstart that process ahead of the SEC and the Big 10? Or is that just a ways off on the horizon yet? No, I think it's absolutely a possibility. I, I that's, that's where I think we're headed. What would that do? And what would that do to the landscape then of college football? Would that expedite the SEC and the Big 10 and the remaining two conferences, ACC, Big East, if you will, into force that into um, into a realignment situation, or would it just kind of play out over time? I mean, I think right now they would hold all the cards. Now, granted, they're losing a lot of their swag with the four teams that are departing, but still, I mean, if you're going to make bold moves, that's probably the next move to be made. And uh, with that, shout out to Vince and Chris at the Baldwin Shop and everybody else who's a Husker fan. I'm getting my lumber order today to build that Kool-Aid stand. All right. Yeah. You guys have a great day. Okay. Thank you, Derek. As, as far as that realignment goes, Gilmark said we're open for business. Um, he said he has, a, he has some fancy words. <laughs> yeah, well, he, said op, he said optionality is good. Optionality. Would you quit laughing? Oh, option aspirational optionality. Optionality is good, he said, and we're vetting through all of them. Derek, Brett Yormark says this. 
I think it's fair to say I've received a lot of phone calls, a lot of interest. He's talking from other schools. Right. He said, we're exploring those levels of interest. Nothing is imminent. It's interesting to hear Derek say that the Big 12 is in a position, of, I don't know, what would he say, a position of power? Um, that they would force the SEC's hand, force the Big Ten's hand? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd go that far. I think the Big Ten. I don't think the Big 12 know, is forcing any no. SEC's hand. No, I think the, the Big Ten and SEC are just fine right now. Right. No, no hands are being forced at all. Right. Now, I guess the one way that could change is if all of a sudden you saw reports that <clears throat> Oregon, Oregon mm -hmm. was headed to the Big 12. 12. Yeah, that'd be that'd yeah. be massive. Oregon, massive Wash, Oregon, and Washington, right? Oregon and Washington. Yes, that, it, they, the Big Twelve needs a shot like that. It does. Now, I don't know that the Big Ten would take um, Oregon and Washington. I don't know that. I'm not. I'm not. You, you hear varying opinions on that. Vince. To the phones again. Uh, we've got Vince up early as usual, Napa, California. Vince, you are on early break. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, fellas. How are you? Vince, what do you got? Well, let's see. Well, well, a couple of things. I mean, both the you know both of the realignment and also uh, and also broadcast you know broadcast being more compelling. Um, one one thing that I thought about. I mean, and I and I don't know where I heard this uh, thought bandied about, but. Uh, uh, but like, but like, let's say, like, like, let's say that the Big Ten ends up luring Notre Dame. One thing that one one school that I can see being somewhat of a natural fit, mainly because they have a, a long-standing cross-country rivalry, and I guess I say this for selfish reasons as much as anything, would be Stanford. Because if Stanford joins the Big Ten, then yeah, I, I'm I'm only an hour and a half away, so I definitely think about I, I definitely think about going to Palo Alto. You know, but okay. um, because say what you will about the Big Ten and as far as adding teams for sort of greediness and being a money grab, but one thing that you can say about the Big Ten is that they're one conference that across the board takes academics very seriously, and that's where those two schools would be a fit. But uh, as far as uh, broadcast being more compelling, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm definitely of the mind that you know there's really only so much you can do from a broadcast standpoint to make things more compelling. And I was listening to Gus's point about um, about how you know Tony Romo yeah. about you know telling us what's going to happen before it happens. Um, I'll tell you one broadcaster that was definitely that way. Now he was Tony Romo before Tony Romo was Tony Romo, and you may remember. Well, Jake, you wouldn't, but Sip, you would. I remember watching broadcasts what, that Hank Stram would do, Hank Stram. and he was very much that way. Mm -hmm. He would always say something like, "Well, they're in good shape. They want to run this on the left side." Okay. Um, right. or, or yeah, well, they look like they can do a little bit, a little bit of business if they throw on the right side. Wow. I mean, but um, he, I mean, he was always that way, and, and invariably, he would also tell you, "It looks like it's going to be a you know a run here or, or a throw there," and invariably it would play out that. Way. And I don't know if it, if he could tell it because of what happened, because of what they were showing formationally, or because of you know maybe he watched practice and he conveyed it to the listeners. But those are the type of things that that I would go along with because to me, I mean animations and all of this and all of that. To me, you're just trying to appeal to somebody that's not necessarily into football. But I'll tell you one thing though. Oh boy. If, if, if Vincent Napa was to bring out anything okay. to appeal to anybody when it came to animation, and you know where this would go, I would bring out Bloody Duck Oh, oh yeah. yes. Sir, that worked. That, that would be, that worked. That would be Thank you. on the broadcast. That I worked. Think. Animation. Thank okay. you, Vince. Well, hang, on, hang on before we get to, to Bob. Bob. Animation has been growing in the broadcast game. Think about, I don't. You might not watch uh, much Monday Night Football the last couple of years, but it's been mocked, mocked because they all, you know, ESPN had like these different animation things that were just stupid. It's like they would try to do something with like, it was like I say, they said the Dolphins versus the Bengals, and they have some sort of ridiculous animated graphic that people would mock every time because it was just stupid. It was it was, it was over. They they tried too hard on it. 
animated graphic. You know what I'm going for, Gus? You know what it looked like? It looks like at the bowling alley when you get yes. a strike yes. and it gives you one That's of those it. crappy oh. animations. Yes. That's exactly what it looked like. And it was weird because it's That's on an right. ESPN broadcast. Yep. Right. Thank you. That's exactly right. It's like, oh, or Kino. You go to Kino and see those things pop up. That's what it felt like. It's like, what is, what's going on? What are we trying to appeal to here? Are you sure? Okay, now, some people could critique our show today and say, Brett Roarmark has a... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your mark. Your mark has an idea of appealing to 18 to 24 year olds. And I think we're assuming that this is through the broadcast. There's probably other ways you can do it. I don't know what though. Like, well, there there's other ways advertising, marketing toward that group. Right now we didn't do a good job of coming up with our own ideas before the show. Well, here's the deal though. Lane has a good point here on the text line. Lane, this is not our area of expertise. No. I will say that Lane says this. The the Big 12 is already, right now, already more entertaining to watch than Big 10 football. If they add more teams, they really could be a great brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you ask me what, what I'd rather watch, a, a Big 10 game of 17 to 13, I mean, 17, 14, or a Big 12 game of 55 to 52, I'm probably going to be more inclined to watch that game. First of all, the Big 10 is not necessarily like that. All right. It's, 21 to 17. No, Sorry. It's excuse not. Me. I, do I need to start looking up scores? Uh, there's been a lot. Of, I'm looking at Northwestern <laughs> games here. Illinois Take games. Take the worst team in the league. Hey, I did what I did. Would, would, anybody, would anybody argue if I said that a, a Big 12 game, like Lane says, is more entertaining than a Big 10 game? I'm not um, saying it's as good a football, but it might be more entertaining because of the high yeah. scoring nature of the game. It depends who you're high watching. Offense. It depends who you're watching. Right. If you're watching, I don't know. You, I don't know. Are you sure about that? I think most would feel that way. Okay. I speak for the people. Um, okay. We've got Kool-Aid Husker Bob on the line. Bob, you're on early break. Go ahead. Hey, it's not Kool-Aid. It's Big Red Soda. Okay? Oh, Big Red. Oh, excuse big me. Red soda. Big Red Soda Bob on okay, the, on the Bob. hotline today. Our bad. Hey, uh, you know, um, mocking up coaches on the sideline or in the dugout or wherever, mm -hmm. okay. you've got to be really careful about that because, first of all, coaches' minds are in the game, and you don't want to be taking them out of the game. Oh. Second of all, if you start mocking up coaches, what's the next thing of plays and, and that, uh, you know, people trying to steal plays in it? Uh, on the side, on the sidelines and stuff, and you don't know who's listening, and you could just give something away by by uh, having a coach mic up and uh, throwing up plays in that, and then all of a sudden, you know, the other team got got access. So there's enough of that going on, that, and you don't do well. Some of these the people that the teams are stealing are going to find ways to to uh, Getting uh, information if if coaches mark mic'd up. Okay. So, and um, you know, John Mann used to uh, on Monday Night Football used to do X's and O's and you know and go through plays and go you know and and stuff and and uh, explain things. So that's not a new concept, but it's a concept that's been lost since uh, he's not since uh, he quit broadcasting. So that'd be something that, you know, that could come up. But, okay. uh, yeah. But my kind of coach, I wouldn't want – if I'm a coach, I wouldn't want to be mic'd up. Okay, you Bob. Know? You know, another thing. Yeah. Okay. If you could get – they want to take the physicality out of football. But if you could get the sound of, of uh, the players being hit and, uh, and that, I mean – if you're on the sideline, it's great because you can hear that. Yeah. You don't hear that in the stands, and you don't hear that on the broadcast. If you could get that to where you know during the broadcast where you can hear that and you hear that live action, it brings you more into the game. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, Bob. Thank right. you. So I, I, that's what you're saying, Sip. I'm. That's you said earlier. You make it a little bit more like a video game. I mean. When you play video games, you can always hear yeah. the tackle, and it is kind of cool. It adds to the broadcast. Okay. It adds. You make a tackle behind the line of scrimmage, you hear it. That's pretty neat. Yeah. You feel like, okay, I yeah, did something that here. That makes sense. All right, we got somewhere. 
I mean, you're talking to somebody who I, I really enjoyed the broadcast when it was Keith Jackson and name a bro Frank Broyles, you know, I mean, that was 1979. Okay. I enjoyed those broadcasts. So I, it, you know what, if I were a conference commissioner, I'd probably try to go back in time. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would not now, now, isn't there something to be said for that simplicity? I didn't hear a lot of, I didn't hear a lot of criticism of those broadcasts back in the day. No. I mean, to me, it's mostly about the football and the and the analysts. I mean, see, and the play by play. The man. ones that get the most heckling are the ones that try too hard. Right. Which I guess that's what I would think that you would do for a broadcast like that is try to make it try too hard to appeal to a younger audience. Yeah, you know, you know, I mean, like again, those graphics, I cannot express to you how stupid they were. If you have Michigan, Gus decrees he's not Democrat. If you have Michigan, Ohio State playing. I don't need a wall. I don't need anything. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, football. Just play the damn game. It's the game. <laughs> I mean, do we need? Why do, do we got to make this hip? Now, I guess if you're playing Purdue and Indiana, maybe and I, that's a rivalry. So that's not even a good example. Purdue, Michigan State on our October Saturday. Maybe you need to dress things up to appeal to people with low attention spans. I, I, I don't. I, apparently, well, that's probably what it is with the phones. Yeah. yeah, I think that's maybe we were talking about. Yeah, I guess. It doesn't. It just doesn't enter into my consciousness. These ideas, I, it's not my expertise. But you know what? Nineteen-year-old Cole is. On he the is. Line. Yeah, he nineteen-year-old Cole is in that eighteen to twenty-four demographic. Yeah. Cole, you're on early break. Go ahead, man. Hey guys, I want to change up the conversation a little bit. I heard this on another show, and I wanted to ask you guys the same question. Okay. If blank, whoever you want is good, Nebraska will be great. On um, both sides of the ball, don't just say Case Johnson, please. Don't make the conversation boring. But I'll give you mine first. On the offensive side of the ball, I'm going to say Bryce Benhart. Okay. On the defensive side of the ball, I'm going to say Stefan Wynn. Stefan Wynn. Okay, thank you, Cole. Maybe we should do that in the next. Yeah, I think we we hope we push that one. Well, hey, yeah. Cole, do you mind if we if we push that yeah, to the, ne to no the next se segment? Yeah, we were behind time anyway. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I like having a lot answers. of calls. Thank you. Put it coming in. Vince, Bob, Derek, Cole. Six o'clock. People are awake. Today. Segment I callers. Like I like it. <laughs> Big fan. Big yeah. fan. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. One that you hadn't pondered very much. How to spice up. That's why I was. I want to hear what people had how to say to, about how it. to make the broadcast more. Useful. Because what I have told you is the way they are right now is fine. The attempt to go younger with the graphics was a disaster. But it could. But it, but there's a lot more you can do. And that's why I needed people's help. Yeah. This was a therapy session for me yeah. and you to learn more. Thank you to the listeners for helping out in some capacity. I don't need therapy. <laughs> yeah, we all need therapy. It is four hundred an hour. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> More next. Or break the Mike Shaver here for Trek CBD. Summer is here, and that means you're having garage parties with neighbors, hitting the golf course, and the pool. The drink of this summer isn't your typical seltzer. It's drinkable Delta 8. Yep, Trek CBD has drinkable Delta 8 seltzers with mango and lime flavors for four packs, 12 packs, coming in a variety of mango, watermelon, lime, and berry. They also have hemp-derived Delta 9 syrups to put in your beverages, and as always, the excellent Delta 8 gummies. Trek CBD at 84th and Andermatt and trekcbd.com. Trek CBD, CBD done right. We have two boys, so we needed more space. We lived in a townhouse, so we decided to build. Casey Bowman and her husband Joe built their first home with us. This is Bob Benish of Aspen Builders. Working with the Bowmans was fantastic. And after the first meeting, we really liked them as people. I was really skeptical about the whole building process, more so than Joe was. If there were problems or issues along the way, they called and explained everything. They just really helped ease my mind. They were really good about giving us options as far as what fit in the budget, what didn't fit in the budget. They have a designer, Rachel. She was amazing. She was very helpful in making sure that our house turned out good. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change the lot. I wouldn't change colors. I love everything about it. Everything. It's perfect for us. Like the Bowmans, you too can make your dream home a reality. Call us at 423-6811 or online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your home is waiting.
at Aspen Builders. The weather in Nebraska is unpredictable every day, and that's no fun when you're trying to golf. Double Eagle Golf in West Lincoln is now open to let you play in perfect indoor conditions daily. Double Eagle Golf has five simulator bays to hit in, by far the most in Lincoln. It has a fully stocked bar with beers and cocktails for you to enjoy while you play. Double Eagle Golf is open each weekday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you can start the day there, take a client over lunch, or end the night with friends. Check out Double Eagle Golf today inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Football season will be here before you know it. And you can get ahead of everyone else with the first annual Evening with the Huskers event at Tavern 180 and Tanner's Bar and Grill. Join 93.7 The Ticket and Husker Online's Sean Callahan for an evening with current Nebraska football players and surprise guests as they preview the season ahead. Enjoy cocktail hour and a delicious Wagyu steak dinner, as well as an open bar for the duration of the event, all for just $199 per person. Click the logo for the event at theticketfm.com to sign up. Don't delay. This will fill up fast. Don't miss your chance to meet and greet with Husker football players at Tanner's Bar and Grill and Tavern 180 in Lincoln at 30th and Yankee Hill. Sign up today at theticketfm.com using the Evening with the Huskers banner. It's an Evening with the Huskers to preview the 2022 Nebraska football season at Tavern 180 and Tanner's Bar and Grill at 30th and Yankee Hill. Presented by Husker Online and 93.7 The Ticket. Registration is now open for all fall sports leagues through Lincoln Parks and Rec. Adult volleyball, kickball, softball, and youth NFL flag football. Competitive and recreational leagues are available, so whether you're an athlete, a former athlete, or a wannabe athlete, there's a league for you. Plus, check out their paid opportunities for officials and referees. Contact Lincoln Parks and Rec to learn more or head to teamsideline.com backslash Lincoln NE before July 24th to register your team. That's teamsideline.com backslash Lincoln NE. These days, there are more reasons than ever to treat yourself to a great haircut at Grey Clips with the online check-in app. So tell us, why do you check in? I check in because I'm tired of hat hair. I check in because we all need a cut. I check in so I can feel like me. And I check in so I look good for you. No matter why you check in, you'll check out with a great haircut and save time with our online check-in app, Grey Clips. It's going to be great. Finally, a good reason to have a smart house. Just say, Alexa. Play 93.7 The Ticket, and we'll magically start playing. How's it work? Nobody knows. Don't ask questions. Shopping for insurance can be a tedious and frustrating task, but the agents at Brokers Insurance Agency will do the work for you. They have partnered with over 20 of the best insurance carriers in the nation, which allows them to do the shopping all for you. Whether you're looking for business insurance or employee benefits for your company, or you're looking to save money on your home and auto insurance, Brokers Insurance Agency has the agents and solutions to help meet your goals. Call 402-420-5353 or email staff at brokersinsurance.ne.com. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round, and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. Now through July 20th, join Planet Fitness for $1 down, $10 a month, and feel spectacular in the judgment-free zone with the most energy you've had since kindergarten when we had daily naps. Exactly. And in our clean and spacious clubs with tons of equipment, you'll feel confident. Like after... I've carried in all the groceries in one trip. More like, wait, that's exactly what it feels like. Join at planetfitness.com or in club. $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Hurry. Deal ends July 20th. See club for details. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. This well, good morning, little brother. Is early break with Sip and Jay, brought to you by Gaina Trucking. <laughs> Weekday mornings from six to eight on ninety three seven The Ticket and theticketfm.com. dot com.
Quick update. Get this. TVs got them rolling. You did well. Both TVs in here got the Open Championship on. You were you were fascinated with the shot that Rory McIlroy hit from a long ways away. Yeah, he putted from about 200 feet. That's what happens over there. You don't see a lot of pitch shots, a lot of 100-yard putts. Good luck judging that speed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you do that. Uh, the Vegas Bobcat weighed in. Hello, Vegas. Um, he said yeah, that. I'd like to hear this. <laughs> The Which I already did here, but on the air. The Vegas Bobcat said that might have been one of the dumbest, dumbest segments ever on this show that we just did. He was mad that we went at the angle. I said, I said, I read every quote that was in the article from CBS Sports. Every quote from Brett Yormar. All He's, of them. Yeah. What the, I, I asked the Vegas Bobcat, why do you say that? You know, we want, yeah. you know, we want to be critiqued. Yes. He said there's so much more you could have gotten out of the commissioner's talk. Well, again, I read every quote that CBS Sports had in the write up about the uh about I, his conversation. I didn't see I, I didn't see a lot. I, I now I, I'm gonna defend you here. I saw a lot of platitudes from him. Um so you know, for instance, for instance, um said any timeline. Cons your mark said any timeline concerning possible expansion is fluid no one knows we're engaged in meaning meaningful conversation and we'll see where it takes us i mean come on what what, what, what there's do you there's nothing there there's nothing there's nothing there i could have said that there's no substance there right vegas bobcat so I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I like. I like to. Uh, what did he want? What do? You, what did he think was more in, interesting? Not sure. Um, the T Bone callers had thoughts. So yeah, T Bone. T Bone called in. Yes. And, and put up a couple things up on the and Gus wrote them down. He said, "Big Twelve Red Zone, like NFL Red Zone. He always shows inside the twenty who's going to you know maybe score in the conference. Okay. You get that? You know, you get NFL Red I've Zone. Never seen that? And you go to the 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 station NFL red zone and the guy, what's his name? Scott, something mm -hmm. uh, Scott Hansen. He's in there for like seven straight hours from the after, from the noon games to three o'clock games. And any time that a game goes to a, a team being in the, inside okay. the 20 yard line, oh, yeah. it flips that game because of a potential okay. score. Yeah. I like that. So it's that's always, it's always about the scoring. Yeah. That's good. Uh, T-Bone also says, get rid of cupcakes for the big 12. Uh, more emphasis on stars. Okay. And more tech from cameras. More tech from cameras. More technology from cameras. Um, more emphasis on stars. Uh, is that is that what is that like? More feature stories. Yeah, I think probably that highlight them. That's not a bad idea. I mean, that's that all makes that that is a good idea. I'm not. I don't know. I just come where I come from on this is from a typical old man take. When I turn on a game, I just like to see the game. As long as there's a good analyst and a good play-by-play -play person, yep. I'm. I don't require a lot. In fact, I am about as low maintenance as you could imagine. You don't even, you don't even need. A I would. Team for you. You in fact, the game. I regard myself in almost everything as no maintenance. It's a good way to be. Yeah. I don't need anything on the broadcast. You could just watch the game without broadcasters. Oh, I know. I like the. I like the, no, 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 no. I like the analyst. The analyst is critical. The play-by-play -play person is critical. Other than that, I'm fine. Now we have turned on the TVs, and you are. I told you this you is going to be a problem. Are I listen barely aware no, of what I just, I just said? I heard what you said. I'm not going to ask you to repeat but it. But you know that this is going to be a problem. I said it. By the way, Ernie Els is four and a par through eleven holes. Okay, the the Ernie Els. three shots back of a, a fella named Young, Cameron Young, Cameron Young, <laughs> a young fellow. Uh, There's a guy up there with the first name Barclay. Hey, in fact, there are one, two, three, four, five players tied at minus four. Yep, Mac Roy McIlroy, Barclay Brown, Kurt Kitayama, Cameron Smith, and Ernie Els. Three shots back of the leader, Cameron Young. There you go. Good shot. Yes. You want to hit Cole's question real quick or not? Yes. Before we get to Rick Heyman, who calls in in a yes. second. Uh, Cole, 19 year old Cole, UNL student Cole, called in and said if person is 
Good. This player, this Nebraska player, now focus. I, well, I'm trying got, to phrase it. We're I, already I, in I, trouble. I forgot if you went great or good to start off. Let's go. If this player is great, Nebraska is good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Offense and defense. Okay. I'll go first. Please do. If this player is great, you can bank on Nebraska being good. Yep. Oh, Sean Mathis. Hello. If he's great, Nebraska, you can bank on them being good. Okay. Great if he gets nine plus sacks. So Cole said Stefan win. I don't know if I agree with that. For mm-hmm. if he, I like if it. he's great, I don't think that means Nebraska is good. I agree. Oshan Mathis is more likely to be that guy. I would defend Cole. I mean, I don't need he doesn't need not, defending. Not bashing Cole. No, no, he doesn't need defending. But I would say if Stefan Wynn is a run stopper, dominant player in the middle, that would that would be very helpful. And he said, off, Cole said offensively, Bryce Benhart. Okay, he said Bryce Benhart. I'll, I will say Trent Hickson. Center. If, if right. Nebraska has a center that approaches the level of play of Cameron Jurgens, Nebraska has a ch- very good chance to be good. I think it has to be someone on the offensive line. Like, if it's Trent Hickson or not, maybe, it's, maybe it is Benhart. Maybe it's Prohaska. Maybe it's mm-hmm. Corcoran. Yeah, you could take any of those. If I had to assume that Prohaska is at left tackle, and I'm putting Cork in at right tackle. Again, this is me assessing. That's what I want. I hope we see a lineup of left tackle, Prohaska, right tackle, Corcoran. That's what I view as the best line, a best tackles. Okay. I'm going to do both. I'm going to okay. do a combo. Yeah. Teddy and, and, and Turner. I know, I, I, know I, I know. it's two people. I'm no, combining them that. as one. All right. Gus? Gus would like to chime in. Didn't we have a center that ha- played at Cam Jurgens level the past three years? Cam Jurgens. Yeah, why weren't we good then? Um. So what's what's Trent Hickson going to do by being good? I mean, have we improved that much in the line around? I him? think you have to be good at that position. Sure, yeah. but yeah, we had that. We had a player good at that position. So you can't pick a quarterback. So would you? So are you suggesting we pick like a trade? I'm I'm not providing any better alternative. I'm just. <laughs> you just I'm just. We have, oh, I think if Trent. No, but I think if you take a step back at that position then you're then, then you're, you're in real trouble, trouble. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm just i'm not yeah. sure if keeping the same level is going to improve us mm, uh, if the if if the player well the, the reason i disagree with you is if casey thompson is an upgrade which we seem to think then and we can't say casey thompson no, can't then you have to take somebody else i did like i did like uh um Cole's idea of Bryce Benhart. I, I do like that a lot because getting that, that right tackle position yeah. is kind well, of, I, And I don't think he's going to start. And really, yeah. In oh, my, I think in, he could. in my world, he doesn't start. Mm-hmm. He's a guard. Yeah. I mean, what, that's my thing. It, Thanks, it gets guys. down to that best five discussion. And who are your best five? I don't know how they're going to be configured. I don't think it's very fair right now. <laughs> Shambo's mine's too. Yeah, he's playing well. He's on his last hole. Yeah, we ha- this TV thing is a. I told you. Yeah. That's why we haven't had it on for a long time because we get distracted. Yeah, easily. Especially when it's actual live yeah. TV. Yeah. Uh, the Open Championship's on. We're paying attention to it and doing radio. Double task, multitasking. Rick Heyman's Song of the Day is next on Early Break on the Ticket. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round, and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. We have two boys, so we needed more space. We lived in a townhouse, so we decided to build. Casey Bowman and her husband, Joe, built their first home with us. This is Bob Benish of Aspen Builders. Working with the Bowmans was fantastic. After the first meeting, we really liked them as people. I was really skeptical about the whole building process, more so than Joe was. If there were problems or issues along the way, they called and explained everything. They just really helped ease my mind. They were really good about giving us options as far as what fit in the budget, what didn't fit in the budget. They have a designer, Rachel. She was amazing. She was very helpful in making sure that our house turned out good. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change the lot. I wouldn't change colors. I love everything about it. Everything. It's perfect for us. Like the Bowmans, you too can make your dream home a reality. 
call us at 423-6811 or online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your home is waiting at Aspen Builders. Empire Fence and Netting in Waverly is now hiring for several positions. They're looking for a fence installer for both commercial and residential, for local projects, and ones that require travel. They also have openings for operators, dirt work, welding positions, and applicants with CDLs are very desirable. If you're looking for a locally operated business that provides excellent work for customers and great benefits and care for its employees, email info at empire-fence.com or give them a call at 402-682-7658. Empire Fence and Netting. Hi, Sean Callahan here for Copple Chevrolet GMC, and it's been a great start here to the year as 2022 new inventory continues to roll in. Our pre-owned lot remains full and we are selling at a record pace. I was just down at Copple talking about a new order for myself and they let me know I can actually start ordering a 2023 here later this spring. So stop on in to get your new 2022, your pre-owned vehicle, or maybe talk about ordering here for 2023. Check them out online at CoppleCars.com. You'll be glad you did. Shopping for insurance can be a tedious and frustrating task, but the agents at Brokers Insurance Agency will do the work for you. They have partnered with over 20 of the best insurance carriers in the nation, which allows them to do the shopping all for you. Whether you're looking for business insurance or employee benefits for your company, or you're looking to save money on your home and auto insurance, Brokers Insurance Agency has the agents and solutions to help meet your goals. Call 402-420-5353 or email staff at brokersinsurancene.com. John Henry's Plumbing. When it comes to your home or business, we know you have options, and that's why John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning gives you just that options. We have plumbing, heating, and cooling memberships to serve all of your residential and commercial needs. We want to ensure you, your family, and your business are safe. Visit our website, jhlincoln.com, to find out more or call us at 435 55 55. John Hammer's Plumbing. Heating and air. These days, there are more reasons than ever to treat yourself to a great haircut at Gray Clips with the online check-in app. So tell us, why do you check in? I check in because I'm tired of hat hair. I check in because we all need a cut. I check in so I can feel like me. And I check in so I look good for you. No matter why you check in, you'll check out with a great haircut and save time with our online check-in app. Great Clips. It's going to be great. 93.7 The Ticket. Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by Security First Bank. A relationship you can count on. Morning thunderstorms will give way to partly sunny skies and a hot afternoon with a high of 94. South winds could gust over 25 at times. We'll see another slight chance of thunderstorms tonight with a low of 75. And more heat on the way for your Friday. Highs tomorrow around 96. I'm meteorologist Tim Wright for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Move over, Jake. I'm moving. Jeez. Thursdays are reserved for a man with a wider range of music knowledge than Jake could ever dream of. This is the golden era. You would hear this on any radio station. You know, it wasn't like it is now. Okay. You know, you got country, you got R&B, you got pop, you got rap, you got rock. They didn't have that then. You heard everything. A man who knows a good song when he hears it, just as much as a good diamond when he sees it. You get a diamond! Yes, I do get Brilliant. a diamond. I get a diamond, and that makes me happy. It's time for Rick Heyman's Song of the Day, sponsored by Sarter Heyman Jewelers. On early break, on 937 the ticket. Name your price, a ticket to paradise. I can't stay here anymore. And I look high and low. I've been from shore to shore to shore. If there's a shortcut, I'd have found it. But there is no easy way around it. Light up the world, shine on me. Love is the answer. Shine on the song, set us free. Love is the answer. Song of the Day, Love is the Answer by England Dan and John Ford Coley. 464 5685. is bad, 10 is good. Text your rating on Rick Heyman's Sauter Heyman Jewelers Song of the Day. Yeah. 
Once again, your song of the day, Love is the Answer by England Dan and John Ford Coley. 464-56851 is bad. 10 is good. Texture rating on Rick Heyman. Sauter Heyman Jewelers song of the day. The song sparks up an age-old debate. <laughs> is love the answer or is money the answer? Mm. <laughs> Seems like money to me. Um, I, I'm joking, Jake. I um, love that song. I think it's a great song. We were both singing that. Yeah. See I, that? I, I don't know. Rick's going to come on here in a second, and he will tell us. I think that's a 70s song. Oh, yeah, for it's sure. Po- is it? It's possible early 80s. Well, we'll see. Love is the Answer by England John and Dan Ford Coley yep. is a song that I've always thought was spectacular. I will give that a nine, a nine yeah, point zero. I, I think it's an eight point one. Gus it's, gave it a three. Yeah. We can get to Gus a little bit. I'm interested in why he would, would give that song only a three. Well, it's not his cup of tea. Yeah, I understand. So eight point one for me, nine for you. We are now giant, joined by Rick Heyman. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we today? Thank you for that song. We're Rick. watching golf and we're doing <laughs> radio. We're listening we're, to Rick. Is we're listening what we're doing. to Rick. Yeah, we're all over. The place. I'm watching. Yeah, I'm watching golf here and on your uh, telecast as well. Oh, oh. That might be a problem. I don't know if it's legal for us or not. I might have changed the camera yeah. up here. <laughs> Thank you, good, Rick. Good ratings. Uh, incidentally, on the golf, I heard I was listening to the golf guys on uh, XM the other day talking about this course, and they said the super, superintendent had it nicely paved. For this week, <laughs> that's yeah, pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's basically concrete. So mm-hmm. the guy you want to pick is whoever can roll it around the best. That's right. Who can putt the best? Yeah, putting and chipping. Anyway, yeah. Uh, to me, eh, top three maybe greatest yacht rock songs ever. Uh, Actually, we are up to number five. I moved the list way up so that by the time you guys go to Ireland and we have football, we'll be out of the Yacht Rock era. Okay. So, okay. okay. But I love the song. I think it's spectacular. It's a uh, Todd Rundgren song. Okay. Um, it was recorded with Todd and Utopia. It never even reached the charts until... It's actually England Dan and John Ford Coley Sip, not the other way around. Oh. Uh, it reached number 10 on the Billboard uh, Top 100 chart in May of 1979. So that was, it was written in 77, recorded by Rundgren in 77, and covered in 79 by these guys. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then. John Ford Coley was quoted as saying, of all the songs we released as singles, this was my very favorite song. Uh, It has a classical bass. The middle had a gospel section, which I always loved. So uh, here's some stuff about these two guys, which the most underrated duo, I think, of the 70s. Uh, Their number, their their top song was 1976, I'd Really Love to See You Tonight. Which is a great song. you've heard a million times. As Sip knows, I love that song. (laughs) It's a great song. (laughs) Uh, This is really interesting. Um, They had a contract with A&M in 72. They couldn't get it going. um, But then they stumbled upon the song, I'd Really Love to See You Tonight, written by a Mississippi-based songwriter, Parker McGee. They recorded a demo and played it in the office of Bob Greenberg, a senior VP at Atlantic Records. They had a subsidiary label named Big Tree in the same office. Doug Morris heard the song through the wall and came into the office and said, we want that song and we want you guys. So he heard it through the wall, a demo, and then came in and and signed them out from uh, the other from the other label. So okay. crazy story. Anyway, great song. Uh, good for our times that we're living in right now, I believe. Hmm. Stuff the sippers. Here we go. Okay. Under or over seven other covers of this song. Ooh, so under. More or less. No, scratch that. Hold on. 
hold on, I'm going for a diamond here. If you're asking me that question, it has to be over. Over. You get a diamond. Yes. It's nine. All right. Yeah, thank you. Tip now, Dan, Seal, Dan Seals, they broke up. Dan Seals went on to become a country star. How many country number one songs did Dan Seals have? More or less than nine? Oh, God, less. Uh, give me a diamond. Less. You get a CZ. It's 11. Dan Seals? Yeah, in the 80s. He was huge. Is Todd Rundgren still touring? Yeah, he's just the a bird one. Yes. yes, you yes. get a diamond. <laughs> Yeah, he was just at the Bourbon. And by the way, Gus's parents had dinner with him. Hello. Hello. What? Yeah. Hello. That's what Gus just wrote in the grease yeah, board. Yeah, Gus's parents, parents had dinner with Todd Rundgren. Just, just had dinner with Todd Rundgren. Do you know where they went, Dish? Uh, yeah, they went to the Blue Orchid after the show at okay. the Bourbon. Okay, there you go. Oh, Gus, you got to tell me about that. Yeah, you got to have to talk on the phone. Dan Seal still alive? Is Dan Seal still with us? God, I think I'd know if he's dead. Um, he's alive. He's alive. Another CZ. He died in 2009 of lymphoma. Oh. I guess he didn't pay attention there. Yeah. Oh, nine. It was a year. For Tough us. year for me, actually. Year. Okay. All right. What else we got? Is that, is that all we got for Stump the Sippers, Rick? That's all we got. All Good right. ones. Well, Good what, ones what's today. going on right now at Sardar Heyman Jewelers? Hey, Sarter Heyman and Jewelers, Best of Lincoln, for more than 35 years, we're local, yet international. If we don't have it or can't get it, you don't want it, SarterHayman.com, check us out. we got a lot of really cool promotions coming up. You can also check us out on Facebook at Sarter Heyman, and I'll post more interesting factoids about this song on my personal Facebook at Rick Heyman. All right. Well, good job. Rick, always good stuff. Good song today. Enjoy the golf, and we will chat with you again next week. Bye bye. All right, that's Rick Heyman, Sardar Heyman Jewelers. Song I'm, I'm a little bit distracted by the fact Gus's parents had dinner with Todd. And he Rundgren. just told us right now. He could have said, Hey, guys, I had a cool story this weekend. My parents had dinner with Todd Rundgren. Todd Rundgren has, it to has had a lot of great songs, including I Don't Want to Work, I Just Want to Bang on My Drum All Day. Yes. But he's had, I mean, he, he's written a lot of hits. He's, he was, he's had a huge influence in, in, in the rock and roll entertainment area. So, yeah. And you didn't see him live. Who's here? <laughs> you know, I didn't go either. So, yeah. It's fine. Uh, top of the hour with Mike Schaefer in studio is next right. on Early Break in the Ticket. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM for 93.7 The Ticket. Mike Shaver here for Trek CBD. Summer is here, and that means you're having garage parties with neighbors hitting the golf course and the pool. The drink of this summer isn't your typical seltzer. It's drinkable Delta 8. Yep, Trek CBD has drinkable Delta 8 seltzers with mango and lime flavors for four packs, 12 packs, coming in a variety of mango, watermelon, lime, and berry. They also have hemp-derived Delta 9 syrups to put in your beverages, and as always, the excellent Delta 8 gummies. Trek CBD at 84th and Andermatt and trekcbd.com. Trek CBD, CBD done right. Now through July 20th, join Planet Fitness for $1 down, $10 a month, and feel spectacular in the judgment-free zone with the most energy you've had since kindergarten when we had daily naps. Exactly. And in our clean and spacious clubs with tons of equipment, you'll feel confident. Like after... I've carried in all the groceries in one trip. More like, wait, that's exactly what it feels like. Join at planetfitness.com or in club. $1 down, $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Hurry. Deal ends July 20th. See club for details. Empire Fence and Netting in Waverly is now hiring for several positions. They're looking for a fence installer for both commercial and residential, for local projects, and ones that require travel. They also have openings for operators, dirt work, welding positions, and applicants with CDLs are very desirable. If you're looking for a locally operated business that provides excellent work for customers and great benefits and care for its employees, email info at empire-fence.com or give them a call at 402-682-7658. Empire Fence and Netting. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round 
and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. I wanted to quit for so long, but I didn't know where to start. I was afraid of what people would think, but then I found the right support to start my recovery journey. One in 14 Americans reports experiencing a substance use disorder, a treatable medical condition. Treatment can take many forms, so there are a variety of options to explore and find the one that works best for you. Recovery from drug addiction is possible. Paid for by the CDC. Sponsored by Nebraska DHHS. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Registration is now open for all fall sports leagues through Lincoln Parks and Rec. Adult volleyball, kickball, softball, and youth NFL flag football. Competitive and recreational leagues are available, so whether you're an athlete, a former athlete, or a wannabe athlete, there's a league for you. Plus, check out their paid opportunities for officials and referees. Contact Lincoln Parks and Rec to learn more or head to teamsideline.com backslash Lincoln NE before July 24th to register your team. That's teamsideline.com backslash Lincoln NE. John Henry's Plumbing. When it comes to your home or business, we know you have options, and that's why John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning gives you just that options. We have plumbing, heating, and cooling memberships to serve all of your residential and commercial needs. We want to ensure you, your family, and your business are safe. Visit our website, jhlincoln.com, to find out more or call us at 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating and air. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. The days of internet contracts and heavy fine print are over. It's time to experience hassle-free service with no contracts or hidden fees. That's the Allo Promise. Allo Communications provides fiber internet, TV, and phone services with fair and no-nonsense pricing. All backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, 24-7 local support 365 days a year, and a monthly bill you can count on. Don't settle for gimmicks. Settle for hassle-free with Allo. Visit us at allofiber.com slash hassle-free. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Wake up, Lincoln. Come on, it's 6 o'clock. Rise and shine, rise and shine. It's time for Early Break with Sip and Jake, brought to you by Gaina Trucking. Live from the Coppel Chevrolet GMC Studios in the heart of Lincoln, America. Here's 93.7 at tickets, Jake Sorensen. Did seem kind of meh. And Steve Sipple. Surprisingly good. This is Early Break with Sip and Jake. Sponsored by Gaina Trucking. Welcome back to Hour 2 on a Thursday. Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, early break. It's a great show because the Open Championship is on. We can watch golf while we're talking. And also, Mike Schaefer is here for 24-7 Sports for our second hour on Thursday, sponsored by Trek CBD. What's going on, Schaefer? Oh, uh, you know, Ernie Els is just going. a normal, normal British Open with no wind. Everyone's just going super low at the moment, except your pick in the yeah, pool. Well, this course. is a standard yeah. operation. My pick always sucks. But more importantly, one of the two athletes that I have an autographed frame picture of in my garage, hanging up prominently over my golf bag. One Ernie Els is on fire <laughs> on, at the you moment. Have a photo of him over your yeah, golf bag? I got an Ernie Els autographed. Uh, I. How'd you do this? I, there was like a uh, silent auction <laughs> yes. that I was participating in. And apparently no one else wanted the autographed picture of Ernie Els holding up the jug. So how much did it go for? I, I got it for like 60 bucks. Oh, nice. So which, he has won the Claret Jug. Oh, he did. He's won twice. it twice. Yeah. 
two he, time he, win. He's going it, for a three peat here. He won it ten years ago, twenty twelve, in a very surprising win. Adam so Scott we, choked. Have we one. said he's mine? Uh, yeah, uh, here's I, your up. That's a little unfair because I'm pretty sure he won it plus one, so the entire field. Well, Adam Scott tournament. bogeyed the final four sure. holes. That's what. Happened. No, uh, right. That's okay, fair. update. Uh, update. Cameron Young leads the way at seven under par. At se- in second place, at five under par through twelve holes is the great Ernie Freaking Els, who me and Schaefer both love. We are both two year old. We are both big Ernie Els fans. I invited him to my wedding last year. He never <laughs> responded. Which you know. So the reason I invited him, he was playing in the the. Uh, Omaha. Senior Open yeah. that was yes. going on in, in Omaha. Omaha at the which country I, I, club. I stuck him. around and watched him play a couple yeah, holes. We of both course, saw him there. His tea time was really late in the day, and the people that I went with, we were there at like seven in the morning, and they wanted to leave by two when he teed off at like two ten. Yeah. So obviously, went real well for me that day. These but. words were uttered by Sip before we went on the air. He says, "How, how can I be older than Ernie Els? I am though, four years older. Fifty-two for Ernie, fifty-six for you. Yeah." Wedding stories. Uh, my brother Adam was married in Omaha in Regency, and Bob Dylan was playing Omaha that at that time and staying at Regency. We, we happened to get on the elevator at the same time as Bob Dylan, and my brother had the temerity to ask him, Would you please come to our room and play a song? <laughs> this is the Bob Dylan. <laughs> Bob Dylan. Didn't even look at him. He just turned around and faced the wall. <laughs> it was just a slow turn. <laughs> That's incredible. I wish it was a slow turn, like a fast turn. It was a slow <laughs> turn. That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> he faced the wall. <laughs> I mean, I guess no response <laughs> was better than. We need elevator footage of that. We need footage of that moment. I got to see it happen live. <laughs> he faced the wall. <laughs> Please I love things to like go that away. so much. Oh, uh, my God. Anyway, so, yeah. What else do you want to talk to Schaefer well, we, about? Yeah, we, we, gotta, well, we have a lot to talk to Schaefer we about. We Sometimes we appear unorganized because that's the way we operate. I mean, outwardly. It's also July. <laughs> but we no, we're pretty organized. It's yeah. July. No, Thank you it's for, July. Yeah, giving us an out. Yes. Yeah. So just, yeah. just we have an out, out there. Yeah. Out in the ether. <laughs> right. It is July. Right. Okay. Continue. <laughs> Schaefer, I totally I understand. I rack my brain sometimes and I think um it is July. Yeah, it is. We have Schaefer with us. Yes. We have media days coming up in just under two weeks. Jake has a one hundred dollar shirt on. This was not quite a hundred bucks. Almost. I told you I would not spend a hundred bucks. The story was I was playing golf in Kansas City. My other shirt I spilled spaghetti on. It was white. <laughs> Who had a 36 whole day at 18 holes, lunchtime. What have you spent in Kansas City on apparel this year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, me and Schaefer went to a Royals game. I he shows up in this like kid small Salvador <laughs> I, I, Perez shirt. I outgrew my shirt up here. <laughs> so I said, Schaefer, I got to go to the store <laughs> because he had it on underneath like some long sleeve thing. Of course, it's like yeah, it got very hot. warm. It got yeah. warm. So he had to. So rather yeah. than parade around in his kid small that looked like a uh, you <laughs> know, like, cut off yeah. jersey yeah, from Nebraska's fabled Did you call him on it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we no, we it was collect. It was like, oh. yeah, this is, this is not going to work out. Well. So I went by a new shirt and I think a sweatshirt. So I don't know. I just bought too much stuff there. That's why he just drops all his money in Kansas City. I do, I do, on barbecue and stuff, yeah, uh, and you know, merchandise. All right, Schaefer, uh, Huskers right now fourteen commits. Yes, they were, they had seven at this point last year. Um, you get Ashley Williams is the most recent one. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would how this go down? How would they get the commitment? And um, and what's your report on him, scouting report? Well, I mean they. They started pursuing him in the spring and then immediately we were able to lock in an early official visit with them that first weekend in June. And he came out that weekend. They did a nice job in terms of recruiting him where it wasn't just uh, Mike Dawson or Eric Shenander, who obviously coach most of Nebraska's edge players, whether they're defensive linemen or outside linebackers. And Mickey Joseph was involved, and Mickey Joseph's done a really nice job playing basically a Pied Piper role of kids from Louisiana. And Ashley Williams, during his recruitment, felt like Mickey Joseph was pretty straight with him and, and had him ready to make that visit. And then he and his mom just really loved 
what they saw when they were out in Lincoln, and they feel like this is a spot where he can go and develop and become a, a potential All Big Ten type of player as a as an edge player. And so I I think very early on Nebraska set a pretty high standard. He also went over to Minnesota for a visit. He was scheduled to go to Michigan, and he ended up dropping that one. Went to Texas for an unofficial visit, I believe. And Nebraska just continued to kind of sit on top of everything. And I think that the conditions were pretty ripe in terms of getting the commitments from uh, O'Marion Miller and, and Barry Jackson, two guys that also visited the same time that he did. Um, you know, you look at that first weekend, and it's it's been a pretty smashing success already. And or the first weekend of June, I should say. Yeah. And, you know, one of the big prizes and Malachi Coleman is still out there. So um, I, I think that sometimes the, the little bit of momentum there helps and, and certainly just the way they started off his official visit season where Nebraska set a really high bar. It was tough for other teams to, to get there. And like I said, his mom loved the visit and sometimes just winning over mom can carry the day for you. Two edge rushers in the class. Would they add a third and Cameron, Lenhart to four yes. stop. Okay. Yeah. He is he's still a, a take for Nebraska. I think position wise, he's he's kind of a unicorn in that he could end up as okay. an outside linebacker or a tweener down as a as a defensive end. Or you know, there's people on our message board speculating he could even play inside linebacker, which I don't foresee. But he's he's more athletic than what it jumps off to you at two or at six foot three, like 245, 250 yeah. pounds. Yeah. But he moves pretty well. And I, I think Nebraska is enamored with him. He's from IMG Academy by way of, uh, For, uh where is John, he by way of? Or Don Bosco out in, uh, New Jersey. Okay. I almost said John Bosco. I don't know who yep. John Bosco is, but. Oh, you're whatever. fine. Donnie so Bosco. So a Mike Dawson type of connection there mm -hmm. brought Nebraska to recruiting him at IMG. Uh, again, another sort of edge player and very different than both Maverick Noonan and Ashley Williams. And I think that's important, too, because if you look at how Nebraska builds that outside linebacker room, they like to have a lot of different people, different body types. You know, Blaze Gunnarsson is different than, uh, you know, a lot of those different guys. And so I, I think that that allows Eric Shenander the fluidity to kind of adjust things as he sees fit based on the offenses they play in the conference. So. I, I think that uh, not only is, is Cameron Lenhart a take, I think Nebraska is far and away the likely choice for him. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I think it happens this summer. Does it get awkward then if you have a commitment there, but two other rushers already with Maverick no. and Ashley I Williams? Mean, like Nebraska has to restock that room. You're going to lose. I think you're going to lose Garrett Nelson. I think you're going to lose Caleb Tanner. I mean, I know you're going you to lose Caleb, Caleb Tanner. Tanner. Yeah. You think Garrett Nelson could be a pro after this year. Yeah. I mean, he's been in the program for five years or four years mm -hmm. and he's started for three of those four years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had uh, a really nice start to last season fizzled out a little bit in terms of production as the year went on. He's got to get better in, in some aspects, but I, I mean, would it shock me if, if he like Austin Allen and Cam Jurgens just decided after a large run of not a lot of success at Nebraska to go try it in the NFL? Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And no, I mean, nor would me. And I'm not one of the people that are, get up in arms about it. He's been in the program for four years. Yes. I mean, well, look at him. He's physically ready to go to the next level. Yeah. Is he good enough to play there? Different question. Right. From a physical standpoint, it's not like another year with Zach Duvall is going to help him no. get to the He's point where he's more ready to go play against grown men. Right. He's already there. Yeah. It's whether he can handle and, and do everything. Just necessary. raise his game. Just got to raise his game. Yeah. So it, it's a big year for, for Garrett Nelson. So those two guys uh, stand out in that regard. And so you, you've got to backfill a little bit. And I, they've had their misses at, at the edge and outside linebacker position as well. And so if, if you see a guy in, in Lenhart that you think can help you out down the line, I, I don't know that you, just view it as okay we got our two we're done completely i i think that they like them and they're moving forward with with him as a potential option for this class so how, how would you respond then to again nebraska having 14 guys already compared to seven at this point last year what what's been the biggest difference in terms of why you've had so much early success there yeah i mean the biggest difference is that they could have guys on campus again starting oh. last summer and then that really helped out when you got into the season where you're able to give visits and then of course the unofficial visits in the spring and then add into that i think both of uh well actually i mean there's three of your of your new hires are, are relatively 
pretty good in terms of of helping at least get guys to campus whether it's from unofficial visits or official visits and i'm talking about mickey joseph and brian applewhite and bill bush I mean, how about vince ginta well and he's involved too i i struggle with that one because it's harder to know what he's doing because it's not like when you talk to recruits they're talking I, about vince ginta so he's I, I see a lot of, of people department. and i don't want to take anything away from him because obviously he's kind of the brain that's setting up strategy here. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like they went out and did anything massively different. Mm -hmm. They're just having more success in bringing in some of these kids. And some of that's directly related to guys like Brian Applewhite and Brian Mickey Applewhite. Joseph and Bill Bush. Mm -hmm. And so you go and you get good recruiters and you have success. I mean, it's sometimes it's not as hard as we like to make it sound. All right. Oh, I hear you. I now know. you get into the winning game aspect. That is yeah, they absolutely as hard <laughs> as we sometimes make it. Sound. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jake, I'm just, I'm just trying to keep Jake's mind. Uh, I'm, I'm in the game. Okay. I'm listening. I'm, try, right. I'm locked in. You and I going to have a conversation. Yeah. That's no. Cool. Hey, so here's, here's a question that I think most people assume they know, but this is from Josh. Okay. He wants to know like a technical, technical thing here okay. that you can help out with. Josh says, if you have time with Schaefer, ask him this. What is the difference between an official and unofficial visit? Like, what are they like? Who gets what? How significant is official versus unofficial oh, as a milestone? I'm a recruiting knucklehead, and those distinctions are lost. On good me. question. Yeah, so an unofficial visit is any time a kid comes to campus, but it's not paid for by the university. So essentially, um, everyone that came in for the spring game, all 75 recruits or whatever they had, those are all unofficial visits. Nebraska didn't spend a single dollar to bring those players from somewhere to come in for a visit. Now on an official visit, you can pay for their flights, you okay. put them up in hotels for a couple of days. They can be on campus for right around 48 hours. Um, you basically are paying for their meals when they're here and then they can have up to i think five family members total you get 56 of those to use every single cycle you can carry six of those over every year uh in the time that i've been doing it the closest nebraska's come to using all 56 is like 48 um so hmm. those are some of the the major differences it really just comes down to did the university pay for this if yes, official visit. If no, unofficial visit. There's not like any difference in terms of access to things at all, though. Besides, no. The money I mean, part. If, if you come up here for an unofficial visit, they're going to put you through the same. And you know, if if you were a planned unofficial visit, okay. if you just show up one day, <laughs> that'd be a different conversation. Okay, but keep going. I'm if you're in if you're a planned unofficial visit, they're going to put you through the same kind of car wash that you know, every recruit basically goes through, which is like, you're going to see the academic skill centers and you're the, the academic center, the life skill center. You're going to get an opportunity to spend time with your position coach. If he's around, you're going to, they're going to set up an opportunity and if you're important enough, they're going to set up an opportunity before you leave for you to talk with Scott Frost. Okay. Uh, so you're, you're going to get all of that. You're going to have a photo shoot. You're going to be in the stadium. Oh, wow. You're going to do all of that as an unofficial too. When it's an official, the change really is that you're shuttling you back and forth from either the Cornhusker Hotel or Embassy there, and there's a little bit of downtime, or you're hanging out with the players. Like, you have player hosts. That's when you hear the term player host. That's from an official visit. Those guys actually get paid, like, a stipend of 50 bucks to help host <laughs> a player uh, for a night. And so, uh, you know, you might be going to a college party, or they might take you down to the rail yard. And you're wandering around downtown. And so, I mean, that's that's kind of where those differences are. They're they're small. Well, the money side of it is not small, but the the on campus stuff, the the difference is generally small and it's spaced out over an official visit because you don't have to cram it all into one day. That was that was, yeah, that was a great breakdown. That was a great breakdown. And you know, for someone like me who's just started covering the program, I I was I was I guess I didn't know the unofficials were that official. But they can yeah. be. They oh, can yeah. be. I mean, it's just, if, it just comes down to they're not paid for. Right. Like when you, you or know, a lot of it's that anyway. when you have some of these giant visit weekends, not everybody is going to get the same version of an unofficial visit. OK, but the kids that you really care about and believe it or not, there's a distinction in how sure. this all works. They're going to get, you know, the closest simulation to an official visit. And then once they've done some of that stuff, and if they've been here a couple times, you don't have to do it on their official visit. And then you can kind of get more time where they get to sit in the room 
and listen to their position coach talk about how they can be used or their films going up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And it's a breakdown of what their skill level is at right now and mm -hmm. what they can take back with them and go work on somewhere else. Great I mean, breakdown. So as soon as you get to a certain point where you don't have to do some of the stuff that everybody does, then it unlocks a different level of an official visit. But not everybody gets there because if you're Ryan Robinson, the defensive back from, from Louisiana, you've never been to campus before. But if you're Riley Van Poppel and you've been there, you don't necessarily need to do the same thing you did the first time. So it's it's all about sort of building the experience and tailoring it to the level of involvement that that person has had with your program before. Okay. From Kip on the text, line, another recruiting question like that. Uh, Kip says in this new world of NIL, can an outside organization pay for an unofficial visit as part of an NIL thing? Uh, I... <sighs> Yes, I don't know how exactly it works, but some of that is you don't want to jeopardize the potential amateurism in someone's state, because I think there are some state laws that that could potentially go against this. I mean, I, I'll put it this way. One easy way to get unofficial visits is that you can sort of build into an NIL package that if you've come out to Nebraska a couple of times, they can kind of set it up where you get paid back on your expense of doing so should you end up at Nebraska as a player. So um, there's an indirect ways that these things can happen. Okay. 402-464-5685. Any other questions, you can always text us or call us also during the show. Uh, by the way, quick update on the Open Championship for those curious. Cameron Young still leads away at 7 under par. Cameron Smith and Ernie Ells two back five under par uh tiger woods tees off at 9 a.m today shape you're gonna you're gonna watch that today or not uh i'll have the i'll have the british on but i'm not i'm not a tiger tracker individual oh. so i mean the coverage will go that way and i'll have to work hard to avoid some of it well you won't would you avoid it well if he's not in contention like if he's in yeah. it we won't today he will not be like three over or something I get annoyed with it when there's obviously other good golf going on and we have to follow him into playing in a, you know, it's not like he's doing anything that matters. He plays now, so infrequently. In this you know, course, Jake, on this day, yeah. he could have a, I mean, just like Ernie Els, he could do exactly what Ernie Els yeah. is doing because no one knows this course right now better than he does other than maybe Ernie Els. And, I mean, he's still one of the best That's golfers. That's why the British Open's great. Can't, can't doubt him. Why British do you say Open that? Is great Why do you say that? Anybody can win. You it. get the most random yeah. sort of subset of people that can win Think because you're either dealing with insane weather, or it's a playable course when it's a day where there's no weather like today. Like again, the the it is playing like concrete, so DeChambeau can hit it a mile. But guess what? Other guys are getting big distance too. It comes down to can you hit your wedges close? Can you hit the funky shots, the yeah. long putts from off the green, or even well, on the can green? you putt? I mean, think there's been guys like Darren Clark won at an old age when he won his British Open. Uh, Simple has Tom, no idea who Darren Tom Clark Watson is. was 59 years old and nearly won the British Open, mm -hmm. one of the best Tories all ever in in sports or just golf alone. Greg mm -hmm. Norman at in his 50s almost won the British Open. Greg right? Norman not invited. No, to yeah, the he was not invited. Royal Andrews. He almost won in his 50s though. Yes, like late 50s. Uh, Purposely disinvited. In uh, uninvited. Yes, yeah. disinvited. Yeah. Unlike Ernie Els to your wedding, yeah. he was invited. Formally invited. But, where, uh, where did you send? Like, you, did you send an actual invite to an address? No, I just tweeted at him. Oh, you tweeted at him. Okay. <laughs> like he checks Twitter all the time. Like, like Ernie Els checks Twitter all the time. You know what? It's a good question, Jake. Ask us. I my vision <laughs> was a formal invitation. You found his address. I thought about it. <laughs> yeah. I thought about like just going and finding the address for his foundation and yeah, then just yeah, it. something like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. He does have a foundation. Yeah. Uh, the Yale's Foundation for Autism. Okay. Before we get to break, Schaefer, the hour is sponsored by Trek CBD, 84th and Highway 2. Any uh, recent encounters over there? Uh, I have not recently <laughs> been over there, but I have had recent encounters with Trek CBD products. And as they often are, they do the job. If you're attempting to take the edge off or recede into the couch or uh, any number of things. So, and, you know, I don't have to tell people it's been really hot outside and one way that you can cool off and also just sort of have a nice mellow Saturday or Sunday. Enjoy some drinkable Delta eight seltzers that you can find at Trek CBD. So they, I mean, they have all the products that the people need. They have a good highway too. check them out. I need to take the edge Trek off. CBD summer. 
Yes. That's what it is. Uh, McElroy teeing off at, what is that hole, Jake? That says hole 12. 12. Okay. It says hole 12. Smoke. The little yellow box up Got there it. under yeah, his Yeah, I was looking to the right. Um, yeah, he hit that you one. You thought he was playing hole negative one. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. Oh, no, he smoked that. Look, he yeah, drove the green. He's, he's uh, four and apart. Yeah, three back. He's More next it. with Mike Schaefer, an early break in the ticket. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round, and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. Registration is now open for all fall sports leagues through Lincoln Parks and Rec. Adult volleyball, kickball, softball, and youth NFL flag football. Competitive and recreational leagues are available, so whether you're an athlete, a former athlete, or a wannabe athlete, there's a league for you. Plus, check out their paid opportunities for officials and referees. Contact Lincoln Parks and Rec to learn more or head to TeamSideline.com backslash Lincoln NE before July 24th to register your team. That's TeamSideline.com backslash Lincoln NE. Shopping for insurance can be a tedious and frustrating task, but the agents at Brokers Insurance Agency will do the work for you. They have partnered with over 20 of the best insurance carriers in the nation, which allows them to do the shopping all for you. Whether you're looking for business insurance or employee benefits for your company, or you're looking to save money on your home and auto insurance, Brokers Insurance Agency has the agents and solutions to help meet your goals. Call 402-420-5353 or email staff at brokersinsurance.ne.com. Well, I'm an interior designer. A lot of builders don't have designers on staff. I'm included with our Aspen package and can make your home more custom to your taste, your needs, and your wants. Rachel's our interior designer at Aspen Builders. She's one of the reasons that makes us really good at what we do. I'm Bob Benish, and we absolutely love how Rachel takes care of our clients. I think the biggest challenge with building is a lot of clients are worried about all the choices. When they come in, they kind of have a deer in the headlights look. I like to ask people at the end, so what did you think? And usually they pause and they say, you know, you really broke it up, kept it simple. We just did one meeting at a time. So I wasn't looking at all the decisions I had to make. I had plenty of time to decide things. You walked me through it all. It made it simple. Make your dream a reality and call Aspen Builders at 423-6811. Online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your dream home is waiting at Aspen Builders. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating it in. When it comes to your home or business, we know you have options. And that's why John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning gives you just that. Options. We have plumbing, heating, and cooling memberships to serve all of your residential and commercial needs. We want to ensure you, your family, and your business are safe. Visit our website, jhlincoln.com, to find out more or call us at 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating in air. The days of internet contracts and heavy fine print are over. It's time to experience hassle-free service with no contracts or hidden fees. That's the Allo Promise. Allo Communications provides fiber internet, TV, and phone services with fair and no-nonsense pricing. All backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, 24-7 local support 365 days a year, and a monthly bill you can count on. Don't settle for gimmicks. Settle for hassle-free with Allo. Visit us at allofiber.com slash hassle-free. Hi, I'm Charlie Stone, and every year at this time, Honda of Lincoln has a 4th of July sales event. And this year, they have got a lot of great news to tell you about. Joining me, Andy Goodyear, General Manager of Honda of Lincoln. Andy, tell us about your big 4th of July sales event going on right now. Absolutely, Charlie. This year, you can choose from over 100 quality pre-owned vehicles, and we have 50 certified pre-owned Hondas with fresh trade-ins arriving daily. Now, Andy, I know you want the area car buyers to know you sell more than just pre-owned Hondas, right? That's right, Charlie. We have people trading in Chevys, Fords, Jeeps, and other imports like Toyotas and Nissans, V-dubs, and more. Whether it's an older car or a late model car, we'll pay them top dollar for it. We're looking for cars every day. Come experience the Honda of Lincoln way of doing business. 27th and Yankee Hill Road, 
or online at HondaOfLincoln.com. The weather in Nebraska is unpredictable every day, and that's no fun when you're trying to golf. Double Eagle Golf in West Lincoln is now open to let you play in perfect indoor conditions daily. Double Eagle Golf has five simulator bays to hit in, by far the most in Lincoln. It has a fully stocked bar with beers and cocktails for you to enjoy while you play. Double Eagle Golf is open each weekday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you can start the day there, take a client over lunch, or end the night with friends. Check out Double Eagle Golf today inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. On the block with Strick and Bach. He obviously played against MJ when he was with the Bulls. Could you tell when he guarded mm. Wizards MJ that it was different than For sure. Bulls? I mean, he still was crafty. He still was very cerebral, still had great hands. So his post-up game and his mid, all that stuff was still efficient. You know, his his actual pump fake game was even more effective. He just didn't have that same first burst. Weekdays from 4 to 6 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Get a lot of advice about self-care these days. But one of the most important self-care steps we can take is making sure we're financially secure later in life. For small steps you can take to save for retirement, visit WeSaySaveIt.org. A message from AARP and the Ad Council. We're on the air. Back. Well, party's starting early today, isn't it? To more of Early Break with Sip and Jay. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. <laughs> on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Once again, Mike Schaefer with us in the studio. You can always call or text 402-464-5685. Any questions you have, uh, you can watch on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter, and comment there also. All right, I want to ask you, Schaefer, because we talked about this to start off the show today. Speaking of intentional. Yes. Brett Yormark. Brett Yormark is the incoming commissioner of the Big 12, officially starting August 1st, but basically running the operation right now. And he was talking yesterday at Big 12 Media Days, said a lot of things. And actually, Big 12 and, Media Days and, is already started. Yeah, it's underway in Arlington, Texas. It's there. Jerry's he, world. His his uh, <laughs> thank you. His goal. <laughs> thank you. His vision for the Big 12 and under his guide is to be more hip, young and Ooh, hip, young yep. and hip. All right. He says he wants to appeal more to the 18 to 24 year old demographic, okay. and we're trying to figure out what that means, what that looks like. We asked Gus, who's 19, his thoughts, and we've heard from different listeners, too. But in your Does that just vision, mean like getting a lot of Keystone Ice branding? Is that kind of what you're shooting Natty for? Natty Ice here? and Keystone Ice. No, I, what does it mean? We Coaches don't know. Coaches in boat shoes and short golf shorts. What, is, uh, what does young and hip mean? To a broad, to a conference. As someone who was never hip but was once young, I can't really say. You're pretty okay. young, though. <laughs> well, relative to you, sure. <laughs> I had that coming. Um, how Actually, do you... I'm trying to think. Am I closer in age to your producer here, Gus? Nineteen. Than I am to you. I think I am. <laughs> okay, well, then, then you are an authority on this matter. <laughs> You're young and hip. There, we're trying. Safer. I mean, we were. Tr- I mean, we we've been heavily criticized by the Vegas Bobcat for not understanding this or going to be in. Fair, the, you in guys this... are heavily criticized by many people. <laughs> yes, right. of the topic. Right. Yeah, so right. that's how we operate. I, how do you? young up the broadcast how do you make the big 12 or just make the big 12 hipper in general i don't i don't know how you take a league in a subset (laughs) of a sport and make it hipper i don't i i don't understand i i don't even understand what the idea is unless you're really gonna try to go hard at a certain level of advertising yes. and branding 18 to 24 year but you funny. still need the product to join along there and then you need the product to look and and not that the big 12 looks the same as the big 10 but you need the you need the product to also have a little bit of its own kind of edge to it um in order to differentiate yourself and i don't know what that would necessarily entail um from a broadcasting but the other thing is like if you're talking about the 18 to 24 generation yes. generation age group i don't know that they're worried about what's going on with the broadcast because chances are they're catching parts of the game on their phone on there you the go show, yep. gear it toward the or phone. they're watching okay. on their computer yeah gear it and toward they're the not, computer. they're not you know 
they're not me sitting at home watching on a large television because this is what I've done all my life. Like they, they've just come across sports and, and, you know, streaming and everything is just different for them. And it, I'm not I'm 10 years older, but there's a size pool. So how do you do that? Maybe you gear you have broadcast. specific yeah. broadcast coverage. Like do you, do you have specific like coverage for people that are watching on their phone? Perhaps like you cover the game differently yeah. that way. Yeah, perhaps. I yeah. don't know what that looks like. I don't either. Uh, you but know, they, the NFL, that's what Brett Yormark's paid to figure out the NFL's play in the playoffs is they have that one game on Nickelodeon that features, you know, a lot of animation and people getting slimed and random things. I don't. And that's to try to entice kids into football at an early age. I don't know how like 18 to 24 is such an interesting yeah six year group of people like you're you're basically like we want to get college kids for this college sport <laughs> yeah but how i, I don't know it, it, I should, don't... Well, it shouldn't be hard right these well, co- these college uh, yes, it kids should be it, it, these college kids are at the colleges is, is shape for saying they should be going to their own games and watching them well, yeah but vote. i mean mm-hmm. i i think you know enough people when you went to college that would go to a, a football game because they had tickets yeah. but if nebraska was on the road it wasn't like they were yeah. throwing all of the same lo- now i mean we're obviously large sports dorks so obviously we did sure but I, there's there's definitely a level of college student that goes to the games when they're at home but doesn't pay as much attention when they're not able to go gus i did gus had ideas for instance miking up more players coaches um mic ups that's that makes sense to me. Uh, this was the quote, by the way, from Brett Yormark on this. You I don't want, even know who if you Brett want, Yormark he is, is the Big Twelve commissioner. It sounds like a fake name. Well, it's a real name. <laughs> it's yeah. a real person. He's, Brett Yormark. He what said does this. He look like uh, he looks. No, I'll look no, I'll show he's you. Fifty five years uh, old. Never mind. I don't have a picture here. Yeah, he's he's, he's fifty five. Here, here is the quote from Brett Yormark. Quote: There's an opportunity to nationalize this brand to be more aspirational to appeal to youth culture, to get younger and hipper. Those are the things I will be working on. Okay. Uh, well, you should really heavily promote UCF and the bounce house, son, uh, when they show up okay. in the Big 12. Um, I, I I guess I'm fascinated, like, what the, the branding advertising concept of this right. is. Because we'll when... when other places have attend and like i'm talking outside of out of sports when other entities have attempted to appeal specifically to younger people with edginess like i'm thinking about like sega and everything that they did to try to differentiate themselves from nintendo and really try to like make nintendo look like a kids game and make themselves look like the you know the the game system for teenagers and people that were cool mm-hmm. And it required a ton of advertising and a very different approach. And I'm I'm curious of a guy that you said he's 55. Yeah, he's 55. Yeah, 55 years old. Yep. I'm curious if he's going to put the people in place that are young enough that think like the individuals that you're trying to attract. But that's some of the battle, right? Well, I think he, that's what you got to do. But well, he has been uh, he was a CEO of the Nets for uh, 12 years, and then he was the entertainment executive at Rock Nation, which is Jay Z's brand. He'll know what he to do. He might know some young and hip people. Yeah, he'll know what he to might. do. I, I'll to do. say this. I don't think there's a lot of crossover between college football, Big 12, you know, that region and Jay-Z's brand at times. But uh, I know you have got a lot of thoughts and a lot of things, Schaefer. I'm curious. Are you in general? Name a thing. I've got a in, in general, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption here, and I think I'm going to be right here. I assume that you – loathe and despise all media days yeah i mean i don't <laughs> they have no does value. anybody like them at all <laughs> they have no value. civil might i i mean i think they have some value i thought for instance last year i thought frost comments about being slow to adapt a little slower to adapt to the big 10 than he would have wanted i thought those were informative a lot of the times though there's not you know you find yourself um, you're just transcribing a lot of quotes that don't mean a whole lot. People still read them, but yeah, I, I, but I do think sometimes it does produce actual informative quotes. I think, and it might just be the product of what we've covered the last few years in particular. 
that one of my takeaways, and I'll give you an example directly from last year, I think it's hard to ask these guys anymore, especially with how college football has moved in terms of multiple players in and out, what their team actually looks like in the middle of July, because what it is in September often isn't how they're talking about them in July. I mean, the thing that Scott Frost was most excited about last year was their offensive line. You can go look that quote up for media days. Yeah, he did that, say that. That tells me that he probably didn't have a great grasp of what that offensive line looked like, mm -hmm. or they weren't able to practice in such a way that he could test that offensive line because at no point was anyone excited about the offensive line once the game started. Mm -hmm. No. It, it, and, and I'm not, I'm not say, trying to pick on Scott Frost no, I get specifically. It. I'm just like. He could have been saying, saying that to build confidence. Sure. That's a, which is a whole other aspect of. I have not found Scott days. Frost to be the type of person that does that with his direct answers to media questions. You might disagree, but I don't, I can't think of a lot of examples where he's done. He doesn't that. do it a lot. I don't think. I think he's fairly direct when he wants to be. Um, and that felt like at the time, and that's why it stands out to me. It felt like at the time, like, Oh wow. He must really actually like that offensive line. If he's singling them out, but it could just be a thing where that was the first thing that popped up. And that's mm -hmm. what he said. I just, mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I've learned a ton in the the various times that I've sat at Big Ten Media Days and walked away, and part of it is that the structure of everything is, well, Nebraska, this is a year, things are turning around, and then you get these day or two days, it used to be two days, which at least it's now been condensed to one for the most part, for the team that you cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, you remember there was a time where you had like a thing to do on both the Thursday and the Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no, no longer. Now, I'm going to counter, I'm going to say, there has been, I'm thinking about times have been productive in recent years, like when Bill Moose, when Bill Moose was at in Chicago and said, you know, he laid out the expectation quote. Um, I think it was six wins six, yeah, and six it was wins. lower than yep. people thought. I thought that 2019. was 19. Yeah. I thought there was value in that. And even last year when Trev Alberts was there and said, we're not going to do this anymore. We're not, we're not, I'm not going to do what he didn't say. I'm not going to do what the previous AD said, but he said, I'm not going to, put out expectations in this setting yeah and so your favorite thing about media days is the athletic director <laughs> showing up and holding court for holding court the, yeah then holding, you well, can just walk down the street and generally get well, the same audience kind of yeah well i yeah. guess you can't technically walk down the street i don't know where the on three offices are, <laughs> right, right. actually well, aren't they right down the yeah street? they are walking yeah in the u.s post do you work in going. those occasionally Occasion. Had you gotten so accustomed to working from home now? It's yes, hard to... generally I've, yes. Sean hasn't like called you and demanded that you show up in the office? <laughs> no, not necessarily. Um, no, I generally work from my home. But I, yeah, you're right. Media days. I don't, you know, what's interesting that Jake answered that. I don't contemplate it that way. I just go, you know. Well, sure. You know, <laughs> you're not like me who needs to, <laughs> to decide whether this has a value or not. You're right. willing to just you go just, do it. Right. it. There's not. Yeah, I'll just keep it at that. Um, but we'll be in Indy. Are yeah, you going to be in? Indy? I will be there. I'm I got to drive out there. Oh, you do. Mm. Do you want me to drive with you? You, you could if you want to. I is there a specific a player you hope is taken? Taken out there, out there so that you can like, is there someone you really would like to hear from in particular? Um, I know who's going. Um, okay, well, then, uh, but I, I would have liked to. See, Casey Thompson will not be there. Sure. I, I would. I always like to see the quarterback there. Yep. In this case, I get it. First year guy, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't make sense to take him. Although Adrian Martinez for Kansas mm -hmm. State is at Big Twelve Media Days. I, I no, nobody that. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm just pining to talk to that I couldn't talk to in August. Is there a specific coach from another program that you're hoping to hear from mm. that you're going to actually allocate some of your time to go? Here's what I would say about that. It does not drive traffic writing about uh, writing about other teams. I know we're going into the weeds here. A yeah, we get the game show here too, but writing about other teams does not drive traffic for our purposes. Right. It does. <laughs> but what do they talk about right. Nebraska? Yeah. We were, not even Nebraska that. specific. Size. Now, it could be a fiery comment about Nebraska. Perhaps, perhaps and that yeah. might. Yeah, you but it. you generally aren't getting fiery comments yeah. in Big Ten. Media. One no. thing that's interesting is to go to talk to the national media types about Nebraska, and a lot of those are there. The Joel Klatz mm -hmm. of the world. Yeah, um, that's that can have some value. 
All right, let's play the game show. Give us a call right now at 464-568. Five hundred chance to win a business box of bagels to Bagels and Joe. It is the Open Championship today. And so Throwback Thursday is past Open Championships. Okay. How about okay. that? Like that? Yeah, I'm sure that's right up my alley. Yeah, you, this is right up your alley. If you think past you know, Open think, champions. think you know your past Open Champions, give us a call 464-5685. Shut up, simple starts right now. We've all been there. You're listening to the radio, and then that rage starts to grow inside of you. It starts to consume you. It gets to a point where you just want to yell, "Shut up, simple!" <clears throat> no, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, here's your chance. It's time to shut up, simple. Call now to play 464 5685. Shut up, Sipple. Brought to you by Bagels and Joe. All right, 464 5685. Call the Nick Down Sip in Shut Up Sipple. Uh, again, I think you're one and two on the week. That sounds right. We're, we're a little late on yeah, this, we which we need some. Maybe that's why, though, we don't have any calls. Anybody right want to call? 402 464 5685. They're scared of your open knowledge. Yeah, they know that Sip's a big golfer, big golf fan. The biggest golf fan. There we go. Hey, Jake, I'm going to tell you something right what? now. And you know this. You know this. I ha- I feel like I have to explain it all the time. But I I like golf. I don't mind it. I mean, I, oh, let's put it this way. I don't mind it. I respect the sport. I don't have a lot of free time to watch on my couch. You should. We can watch you here at the studio. Like yeah. you are today. Yeah. Like, it's I, live. Yeah, I'm, the I'm, only time it's ever live is the British I'm, Open. I'm here. entertained. For I'm inter- We're going to keep the TVs on now going yes. forward on our show all the time yes uh we are you, you are 26 what are you and 19? Watch most days uh just probably espn type programming stuff from the night before yeah. joe how do you feel about past open championship winners mediocre yeah mediocre i'm i am very familiar with the word mediocre yes well you're seven games above right now, so not that mediocre. Well, in most aspects of my life. All right, Schaefer's lifeline for one question as always. For Sip, Joe, here is your first question. What Irish golfer won the 2019 Open Championship at Royal Portrush in Ireland? This is to you, Joe. Oh, he made a yeah. strange sound. Uh, um. Man, I I know what he looks like. I know his name, right? I'm just gonna say Roy McIlroy. Okay. That is an Irish golfer. I'm tempted right to one. do this and keep Shay from my back pocket, but I, I'm 50 percent sure. I think I better go for the sure thing. My feeling is oh, Joe's on thin ice. Um, go ahead, Shay. I've been told that we're doppelgangers. <laughs> uh, Shane Lowry. Yeah, very similar. Shane Lowry. Nice Shane job. Lowry and and Shaper are very similar. Nice versus. job, Shane Lowry. I wouldn't have got that. Okay. Uh, Sip, you're on your own, but Schaefer's been utilized That's correctly okay. for the 2 0 lead. Now, he, he did finally utilize it. Your right. analysis of the game show is always. What very American golfer won the 2015 Open Championship in a playoff at St. Andrews, which this tournament's at too? American golfer, 2015. Victor at St. Andrews. Five seconds. I think his first name's Patrick. <laughs> Get this. <laughs> you, I wish you had seen this like moment of clarity. I think his name is Patrick. Patrick. You'd go with Patrick. Patrick Smith. Oh. There's no Patrick Smith that I know of. Uh, Joe, do you want that one or not? Is it Zach Johnson? It is Zach Johnson. Now you are in trouble. Oh, no. All right. uh, For the 2-1 lead, Joe, here's your final question. What South African golfer won the 2010 Open Championship by seven shots, his only major title still to this day, also at St. Andrews? Um, is is it Louis Oosthuizen? Oh boy, Louis Oosthuizen is correct. We've got three correct. I didn't think about so that far. one for a second. All right, Sip, you are yeah, the on UPS your... guy. Yeah, that's right. The UPS, <laughs> get the UPS sticker on his or the logo. Sip, you're on your own. You're giving trying yourself to to a overtime. massage here. I'm trying there. to get to overtime. What Irish golfer is the last person to win the Open in back-to-back years, winning at 
Carnoustie in 2007, and Royal Birkdale in 2008. It's an Irish golfer. 2007 and 2008. That's right. Ian Woosnam. Ian Woosnam is never from Ireland. Wales. Ian Woosnam is a Welshman. Yes, he's he's from from, Wales. Oh, he's from Wales. The answer is... Hey, I don't have it off the top of my head. Padraig Harrington. Oh, okay. Jake's guy. I love Padraig. Okay. Just won the U.S. Senior Open. Thank you, Jake. Uh, Congrats, Joe. We'll get your bag of those. Thanks for calling in and calling down the road. Thanks, y'all. All right, thank a you. Losing Good week job. is clinched for SIP at one and three. Twenty six and twenty is now the yeah, record. Yeah, that's too bad. It's okay. It's all right. We're here today. We made it. We've made almost made it through the show. And, and what I would describe as a very very mundane news yes. day yesterday. Well, we made it through. Yeah, we tried to make something of Big Twelve Media Day's appearance by the new commissioner Brett Yormark. Some people seemed engaged. Others criticized us. <laughs> Mostly engaged. <laughs> Spillover's next. I know they're breaking the time. Mike Shaver here for Trek CBD. Summer is here, and that means you're having garage parties with neighbors, hitting the golf course, and the pool. The drink of this summer isn't your typical seltzer. It's drinkable Delta 8. Yep, Trek CBD has drinkable Delta 8 seltzers with mango and lime flavors for four packs, 12 packs, coming in a variety of mango, watermelon, lime, and berry. They also have hemp-derived Delta 9 syrups to put in your beverages, and as always, the excellent Delta 8 gummies. Trek CBD at 84th and Andermatt and trekcbd.com. Trek CBD, CBD done right. The new 18-hole course is now open at Adventure Golf Center. You knew them before for their 36 holes, and now experience a brand new style of miniature golf with par 3s, 4s, and 5s. It's a new concept to the Midwest with holes longer than before and unique hazards throughout the course, and it's fun for golfers of all ages and skill levels. Plus, there's a bar on the course that serves alcohol. Try the new 18-hole course today at Adventure Golf Center at 56th and Old Cheney. How would you like to win a two-night stay in a beautiful cabin where nature is on full display? Just enter the Nebraska Lottery's Your Park's Second Chance promotion. Until August 23rd, enter any non-winning $5 Nebraska State Park scratch ticket for a chance to win a two-night stay in a gorgeous cabin at one of our scenic state parks. Your package also includes cash, a fuel card, and other great prizes. So buy a ticket and start your state park adventure today. Scratch ticket top prize odds won at 88000 Any lot, any lot, set, hut! Announcing the Nebraska Lottery's Lucky for Life Ticket Snap. Start the play by purchasing a Lucky for Life ticket by July 26th and enter the voucher number for a chance to win Nebraska football skybox season tickets, regular season tickets, single game tickets, or a weekend football experience. It's our Lucky for Life Ticket Snap promotion, and it's 100 yards of fun. Lucky for Life top prize odds, 1 in 30 million. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating it in. When it comes to your home or business, we know you have options, and that's why John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning gives you just that options. We have plumbing, heating, and cooling memberships to serve all of your residential and commercial needs. We want to ensure you, your family, and your business are safe. Visit our website, jhlincoln.com, to find out more or call us at 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating it in. You know you want that smoky, tangy, sweet, and spicy sauced and tossed wing stop. But you just brought a haul of groceries home from the store. It's cool. No one expects you to shop and cook in the same day. So let the flavor experts at Wingstop hook you up with mouth-watering wings, crispy tenders and thighs, fries and sides delivered to your door. You can always cook tomorrow. That's why the fridge was invented. Get it delivered at Wingstop.com. Order your Wingstop online at 28th and Superior, 50th and O Street, and 29th and Pine Lake. Sandhills Global is hiring. Check out sandhills.jobs for more information. Sandhills is looking to fill hundreds of new openings in sales, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Sandhills has a professional culture and is fast paced with a focus on growth, innovation, and leading edge technologies. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Apply today at sandhills.jobs. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth. 93.7 The Ticket. It's time to start thinking about what's next. 
Where do you see yourself in five years? Southeast Community College wants to be part of your conversation. SCC Discovery Days give you an immersive look at our campuses in Beatrice, Lincoln, and Milford. Come take a tour, meet our instructors and students, ask questions, and see all the new things SCC has been doing and building in the last few years. See more and register online at southeast.edu slash visit SCC, your path to possible. Hi, Sean Callahan here for Koppel Chevrolet GMC, and it's been a great start here to the year as 2022 new inventory continues to roll in. Our pre-owned lot remains full, and we are selling at a record pace. I was just down at Koppel talking about a new order for myself, and they let me know I could actually start ordering a 2023 here later this spring. So stop on in to get your new 2022, your pre-owned vehicle, or maybe talk about ordering here for 2023. Check them out online at koppelcars.com. You'll be glad you did. This is Dan Friedman. Between 2010 and 2019, distracted driving caused more than 40,000 car crashes in Nebraska, resulting in over 14,000 severe injuries and deaths. Please keep your eyes on the road. If you have a smartphone, put it away while you're behind the wheel. It will help keep our community safe and secure. This message is brought to you by Friedman Law Offices helping injured people. It's what we do. It's all we do. Find us at freedomandlaw.com today. This. Anybody who knows me knows I was cocky out of the womb. <laughs> it's early break with Sip and Jake. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. Weekday mornings from 6 to 8 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. It is time for the spillover. Uh, Jay Foreman has joined us. Mike Schaefer is still with us. We're watching some Open Championship golf. Uh, I was telling Jay that Ernie Ells is five under par. He is two back, three back in the league because Cameron Young's in an eight under par at this point. Jay, you had a very interesting story about Ernie Ells. You met him before. I did. I was uh, exci- extremely excited to meet him. He's a big human being. Him and VJ Singh are. Big dudes. For I didn't golfers. know that about VJ. VJ's oh, VJ's huge. Um, six two and a half. VJ's easily six three, six four. But Ernie's a big dude though, like a big broad type of guy. Um, my agent had a, a professional golfer by the name of Jonathan K back mm-hmm. in the day, and this was, I think this was back in Charlotte when it was the Wachovia Open or Wachovia. Yep. So Jonathan was playing and knew he wasn't you know we we're in town, and he got me in to kind of walking the ropes and you know it was a practice round and uh he was playing with er- <clears throat> ernie so he was introducing us to you know the guys and you know ernie gave me the old european handshake a big dude definitely 220 or 30 40 pounds what's the european handshake it's like the dead fish and it's like oh yeah it's not the Texas handshake where they try to destroy your hand <laughs> you know <laughs> they try to, to death. squeeze it to death like it's That's like the european they're, they're, handshake they do that yeah i thought it was i thought it was more specifically when you grab like the first four fingers like yeah. you don't go all the way in. yeah it was just like a very it was just, just like know this, this. I, I didn't it's know like it was this. described as that when he did it, it was like this yeah yes yeah. yeah european handshake maybe you didn't trust you know that you wouldn't have sweaty hands or something like that I, I, well, I I'm, I'm not trying to maybe he's just trying to protect his shake, hands yeah. from injury i don't know yeah, i'm just, I'm just it, trying to like protect yeah, maybe my so, own maybe so i was extremely disappointed i mean I'll bet I, you. Yeah. Were. So have you lost. Have you lost respect for him from that moment on? No. We, I mean, he's he's Ernie L's, but I was. He's I'm, our guy. Yeah. He's our man. He's my favorite. Quote would, on but show. I just was taken back he's, by the yeah, huge. Yeah. I would be too. Right. Yeah. You just, you yeah just, I would be. I wasn't expecting like a a Texas handshake right. or like a come in and hug it out. But right. I was. No, that is no. Yeah, that's, it, was, it was a little weird. Yeah, that's a little weird. It was, good, it was definitely a little weird. I mean, it was it was it definitely didn't match up with the big dude. Right. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like Mike Tyson. Like he if, has, and if, he has that high pitched voice. You don't expect. <laughs> yeah, or Bill Moose. What if he dropped? If Bill Moose dropped that on you, a, a, a dead fish, dead handshake? fish handshake. Yeah, it'd, it'd be, be weird. Shocking. You'd be, be shocking. shocking. Be, that ain't right. You know what? No, Bill, you know what Bill man. Moose reminded me of. He Who's reminded that? me of like Teddy Savalas with it's, a cigar. Yeah. It, obviously, he wasn't bald, but yeah. like with yeah, the silk did. rope, right? He he had that type of did. right when you talk to him. You just every hey man, how you doing? Everything good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know this is you want some. 30, you know, this is yeah. 30 year old wine, and yep. I got a cigar from here. Yep. Sit back and relax. Yeah. You know? He was yeah. very cultured yeah. from a very political background. So, yeah, he kind of had yeah. that way. 
kind of had that way. Yeah. You know? The Nebraska version of Teddy Savalas. Yeah. Yeah. Any guys? I don't know who that is. Yeah. I don't know. Teddy Sav- that's a, that's a reference I don't know. How, how old are you? 34. Kojak. Jesus. Kojak. So when I got to I'm college, 31. you were three. Yeah. And you were six. <laughs> yeah, this right. is crazy. I mean, I can't even. Yeah, come on. You, I, you, I just you can't can deal with it. I can't. You can. I, I can't. I can't wrap my head around it. You were six years old when I when I was trying to run, over, run jump out of the way from Corey Schlesinger. <laughs> I know Corey Schlesinger. Yeah. Oh, Rockhead. Who's our trash man? Yeah. Legitimately. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. get it. But <laughs> other people guy, always look at me weird when I say that. Corey like, Schlesinger. Dad ran the sanitation company. Made guys tap either. out at yeah. the professional level. Mm-hmm. I mean, he hit Jesse Tuggle one time. And the, the story is that he uh, it was an ISO play. So back when they'd run a lot of ISO or power or boss plays. And Jesse Tuggle was a Pro Bowl linebacker, played for Atlanta Falcons. And he hit, or Corey Schlesinger hit him, knocked him out. Literally, when he hit him, he kind of did like a little pirouette or whatever. Oh, wow. Boom, down. So we're watching. You know, I'm watching tape or whatever. So I asked Corey about it after we played him. And he's like, yeah. He's like, Jesse came back. So back then, you get, you get a concussion. You got to come back. They give you smelling salts. You're back out there. And he said, he went up to him. He said, hey, man, nice to see you that you're back. You woke up from your nap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Corey Schlesinger, I, he might try to kill me today. So we played him, and I was telling Jamie Sharp, I said, "Look, dude, this this dude brings it." And he was like, "Oh no, nah, you know, we you know we went against Sam Gash." I said, "No, Corey wants he wants to just see who can die first. Mm-hmm. I said, "This is oh. what you, I said. This is what you need to do, man." I said, "He, if you get caught in a hole, mm-hmm. you better find a way to slip out of there." <laughs> You know, because it's not going to be. I mean, you got shoulders and stuff to yeah. protect or whatever. Yeah. So Corey came in there, and Corey, I seen him like getting all pumped up, and I knew it was going to be an ISO. This is when he played for Detroit, mm-hmm. so I'd already been talking junk to Dom or whatever all all week, and talking even before. And I saw Corey coming, so I took off like a beeline, like I'm gonna get him. He thought he was gonna get it. Oh, laid him, made the tackle. He went flying. Oh, he dog cussed me. He chased me for the next 58 minutes. <laughs> Couldn't get me. You know, you know what I mean? Just because he would just never matched up. Yeah. He was hot. And we never played against him again. <laughs> I'm ever, not stupid. You got to be smart. Did you ever get a concussion playing NFL football? Or yeah. I think the first play I ever played, I was, I was knocked out. The first Went play. To, oh, yeah. Ran down on kickoff. Went to the wrong sideline. Felt right? like I made it then. Like, I was, it was like the thing. And, and you know what? Wrong it it's was, like going to the wrong it, corner. And it was it was all because <laughs> it, it of is. my uh, really good friend, Rayon. His name is Rayon Hill. He's actually from LSU. Played at LSU. We used to call him. I can't say it on the radio. You could say. We used to call him. <laughs> PC we used, friend. We used to call him Crappy Ray. So he, the other word for oh, crappy. Yeah, because yeah. The, when, the way he looked in his uniform, we were like, Ray. Like, you just. I mean, he would have. Three fingers cut off on one glove, you know, some, you know, one, you know, like a hole in this glove. He had like a hockey elbow pad, you know, and they were taped the jerseys. He was number 39. The three would be down here. Then, I mean, he did look horrible. But when he would get introduced, he would dance from the time that you come out of that thing through the whole line. <laughs> he like everybody's trying to run you know when you, everybody gets re- introduced and you yeah. run down and warm up yeah, yeah. we would have ray would just have to be last right <laughs> so ray rayon rayon he's he was great and he's from the ones and you couldn't really understand what he was saying because a lot of times when he's talking to you, he's eating food going everywhere but he was great <laughs> yeah and gabe northern was up there so gabe kind of took us all in yeah. so rayon was a free agent got cut practice squad Went to Canada for a couple weeks, you know, and um, came back the next year, made it. So we're on kickoff, me and Rayon. And um, we're running down there, and this is when they ran the wedge, and we were playing Seattle. And so, you know, that back then they would make you wear all the pads. I was like, I ain't wearing pads. I was like, I got to be hitting this line running, okay? Yeah. So I had, like, I think I had some, like, Nike running shoes, the lightest shoes, and just spatted them up a little bit. So they ran – uh a four man wedge. So of course, Bruce DeHaven, who I was just talking about, who I love, mm-hmm. if you're a rookie, that's what they were going to make you going to do. See, hit the wedge. Yeah. I'm like, all right, you got, you got to earn your stripes. So if there's a four man wedge, I got to hit in between two guys. And so does Rayon. Mm-hmm. Right. So 
you know it's coming, mm-hmm. right? They must have called each other and said, the special teams go, hey, we got two rookies, just run wedge. And I'm haul. I mean, we hit, I mean, I'm hauling, lift wide open. Guy runs and clears out. I'm like, here we go. I'm looking. Peripheral, me and Ray on there. Turf monster gets him. <laughs> So I, like we're running, I just see out of the side, Rayon bites it. Yeah. So as I was going to hit in between you, you two, yeah. here comes Max Strong yeah. right into my side of my head. It was <laughs> literally hit it. And I think I just saw like remember when Rocky went down after he lost it, like what Clubber Lane? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hit that. That's probably when I woke up. Got up, run into the other sideline. <laughs> he dragged me right out of the way. Yeah. That's so you're, you're over here, man. <laughs> Bud, Bud was one of our trainers. He's like, he's all right. I was like, he's like, do you know where you're at? And I was like, no. And he gave me some, you know, smelling salts, and I went back in there. That was that was the first one. I got quite a few after that. You're not diagnosed officially. Uh, they didn't start diagnosing concussions until like <laughs> totally. two years after that. And I then got some. I got a lot of them were like friendly fire. Kylie yeah. Wong got me one time. Oh. Like one of the only plays he made when we played the Chiefs at the Chiefs, you know, and I was like, "You missed Priest Holmes <laughs> here." You know, I just I just got done going up against Will Shields, and I'm got Priest Holmes, got him to the ground, and here you come, like, and hit me. <laughs> like, and it was at the end of the game. It was like like four or five plays late, or you know, before the game's over, and here I am out there just laid out, just boom. <laughs> He's like, oh, my bad. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is your bad. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Yeah, that is Playing your bad. football sounds a lot more fun than covering football. Playing sounds a lot more fun. Yeah, you want fun. a concussion, don't you? It sounds <laughs> it fun. Sounds fun. Yeah, it's going to the wrong well, side. You, you can't get a concussion in the press box? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't think so. I mean, I've I got it quite a few when and the we got it, gave a few. Yeah. But you're gonna get some stuff a few. sounds fun. Hey, there's there's different levels to it. There's big ones, small ones, and oh, kind of yeah. oh yeah. I knew I was in some trouble when uh with concussions and like neck injuries, like when we were in mini camp one time and we just had sh- spiders on and you kind of like graze and you know, everything just fired up. I was like, Oh man, this, we got figured we got, I got to get this taken care of before I get to training camp with Dom Capers training camp. Yeah. When we were like the junction boys out there, it was <laughs> like the battle of attrition, mm-hmm. you know? And when we, when I first got down there, they still, they were doing like live wedge drills and stuff like that. I mean, we led the league in injured reserve guys and stuff like that. So it was, it was definitely way different. Matter of fact, somebody was asking me about does Nebraska go two a days? Technically, they do. Realistically, they got it easy. Oh, God, it's yeah. changed dramatically. I mean, if I was playing in the NFL right now, just the fact that you don't practice that much and you're able to kind of take care of yourself, you know, if, if you can't, if you can't, if you can just focus and find a way to make a name for yourself in the league, you can hit 10 years pretty easy. Yeah, the two a day thing at Nebraska has changed in just incredibly Does dramatically in the last anymore? twenty years. The like, five hundred plays that Coach Osborne had to play yeah. or run mm-hmm. in two practices. Yeah, yeah, you had legitimately two practices a day. I mean, two, yeah, two, two major practices yeah. a day. And when we had one, it was extended practice, and then we, you know, had walkthrough. But it was, I mean, look, they took tremendous care for us, but we went after it and we got after, <clears throat> got after it. It was part of what made us. Good. And to be honest with you, I don't think we had a lot of injuries. Um, didn't have a ton of we we a lot of it was fundamentals though. Mm-hmm. Like when Jason Peter and those guys talk about being down in the pit, mm-hmm. it's fundamental, it's good on good. It's not a ram contest. Let's just, you know, like the Oklahoma drill, see who can be dumb right. enough to try to <laughs> knock each other out. It's me <laughs> against you, good on good, mm-hmm. compete. And if you're doing if you're doing it with the right fundamentals, mm-hmm. the injuries in your body just kind of hardens up to it. Yeah. I don't. I, I can't remember the last time. I mean, I think during the Pelini years they were doing. Not really. No, they weren't. No, they, they were had, doing a little. Had two practices. A they day, were doing a little bit. But I'm going to yeah. tell you when I knew Mike Riley was in trouble. This is when. I, there's two things. Um, so me and Jason went down to practice, mm-hmm. and it was funny. It was like you know, here comes one of the better players that ever played defensive line, right? Mm-hmm. Jason and Peter. Jason Peter and the defense line coach is acting like it's like the pizza guy. It's like, dude, like he Hughes. should be like he should be stopping practice. This was that, is the was that Hank. Well, it, I mean, it, I would it, think it, John Perello would know. It was one of the two, Peter. right? So then I was like, okay, that's number one. I would think so. That's problem number one. So obviously, if it Hank Hughes was a problem, then he didn't know the history. But this is a guy that you stop practice regardless of what you're doing, and they weren't really working hard. You know what I mean? So then there goes that. Number two, 
Mike Riley probably wanted to talk to us for 45 minutes. I was like, dude, you need to go get this practice. It was Miami week. Mm. Number three, which was the most telling, they were in full pads. In two hours, I didn't hear one one pad hit. Oh boy. I'm like, you going down to Miami and you ain't hitting, and no matter where Miami is like standard where they're at, them boys are gonna be physical. Mm-hmm. And you saw they got ran up out the uh, out the yeah. out the stadium. Early. Yeah. They came Early. back, they came back. Overtime. They came yeah. back, but I get but, you. I yeah, get you. I mean, they weren't was, ready. They, they weren't ready. But they weren't ready. Right. But it starts there. I'm just like me and Jason were riding home. I was like, dude, this <laughs> you think imagine right. we, we were thinking like imagine Oklahoma week. And full, and we're we're talking about full pads, and you're two hand touching, tagging off. Well, what's the point of having the pads? It on? was interesting. Riley was interesting. I'm not necessarily being critical here. He would talk to you during practice, and I was always struck by that. He not would come locked over, in. not locked in. He would come over and have his back to practice. Yeah, he was. And I always thought I'd always get. I, I'd always tell like the, uh, whoever writer I was with. Um, I mean, it's because he's gonna watch the film. He doesn't need to see every play. I was just trying to defend him somehow because <laughs> uh, i yeah. defend all yeah watch the film but just don't watch it in real time yeah he wasn't watching in real time he come over with his back to you and talk and it was weird which, ne- which i'd never experienced it was weird with mike riley that he would get more upset at the coaches that were trying to hold the players accountable versus the players that needed to be held accountable like that just didn't make sense to me and maybe that's why like at the at the pro level he wasn't as successful as people thought and it's weird that he was successful at, at a place, you know, those few years at Oregon State, which I think was probably set up by Dennis Erickson, who came from Miami. Right. It was set up for him, sure. And and uh, which kind of like what it was that year he won nine games with Bo, and it then just kind of dissipated after that. I always felt like that hire with Mike Wright, one, it was out of nowhere. Two is when Nebraska played up at Ohio State, and I think Tommy Armstrong got hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got knocked out. Yeah, he got, two to three game. Yeah, he got hit on the worst road side. experience. Right, but pretty, but here's the pretty, deal. Pretty After bad. that game, Mike Wright, it, he was way too comfortable in that situation. So that let me know that he had lost so much, he was cool with it. Mm. It was like, oh yeah, I've been here before. <laughs> know, yeah, this is no I big know deal. How this goes. I can got boat raced before. I just got boat raced by Oregon or something. Like it's no big deal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and that what that does is filters down to the players, so they're okay with getting their butt kicked. Mm-hmm. And weirdly enough, he had some good players. I mean, he had the Davis twins. Yep. Oh, he had some yeah. good players. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, it's just. Yeah, it's like it, I just treat it like it never happened. Well, it's, it's too bad that it did. <laughs> it's like two coaches in the in last like 20 years, like Callahan and Riley, just like. Uh, you know, I defend man. Bill more than that. I mean, I, I thought, I mean, they got to a Big 12 championship game. Um, I don't defend them in that. I, I, well, do, I, I do. I think I think it's a little bit with me with Bill is because. For some reason, he just like it'd be like me going to Alabama, being the coach, and be like, "All right, just erase Nick Saban and Bear Bryant." But he had an opportunity. Oh, he did that though. You're right. right. He did so that. It, so that's I, just I think you. he did that. Was that at the a, did the ad? Well, I'm, they're they're that. yeah, they're lock and step. I mean, yeah, you can you can say no. Yeah, you can you actually yeah. can just go to work right. Yeah. Like if it, they got a statue of Nick Saban and Bear Bryant down in Tuscaloosa and. I'm still going to go to my same office and coach the same team. Mm-hmm. So maybe just, that's it. But so, yeah, Bill probably did better than than I'm, I initially. Bill's greatest downfall, though, was Cosgrove. And, and Cosgrove just wasn't – he was a Big Ten guy trying to coach in another world, you know, trying to coach in a Big Those 12. Those defenses in Wisconsin were horrible, too. <laughs> When did he ever have a good defense? Did he ever easy, have a good one? Easy. I'm curious. And I think he did and, have and he had a couple. That's yeah, a, that's I think an he did. Honest question. No, I, he my honest answer is, I did yeah, think he had a couple, he had a couple but generally yeah. they were garbage. Yeah. Generally they were. They but were he garbage, was a fish defense. out of water in the Big Twelve. He's a Big Ten mentality, that type of defense, and now you're in a, a spread. Well, you got the reverse of that league. with Bo. They yeah, were doing at the very end of his tenure. He did clearly had no idea how to run what he. Well, he didn't have the personnel. I used but to he have wouldn't. A personnel. It's it, and you know what's weird. And Shafe, you could probably talk to maybe on the bigger landscape. Maybe you two sip and Jake. Like we talked about when I got recruited, Coach Osborne came. Like nowadays, like and this, is a, I'm not talking about our coach, but I'm just talking about gym. like head coaches don't like to recruit. And I mean that that's just that was part of their deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like back when I was getting recruited, they were kind of like the closer. Yeah. Right, I would and, then, say the, and that's changed. Is that because guys have been so be, I, good at recruiting, like assistants? Well, I think the big difference is that when Tom Osborne would be showing up at your house, and this is still true because there's only so many 
head coaching visits that can happen. On okay. The road. Yeah, anyway, and I don't know all that. Those rules. If either. you think about it with coaches now and the way that Nebraska makes offers and how many, so Scott Frost would have somewhere in the neighborhood of like what 125 conversations with recruits now sitting in his office because they have this many, you know, between 2023 and 2024 yeah, yeah, yeah. and 2025. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you think about what it was like when, Tom Osborne would be talking with you. Nebraska probably had a very dialed down list of yeah, 45 to 50 kids. Right. Yeah. And it's just exploded in such a way. It's definitely and different. You can't just, you know, sit on top of the list. Like you got to obviously work through work, it. Work, work, yeah. So I Prioritize can see where burnout well. is so high yeah. because you have to have the same version of the same conversation. And you're dealing with probably a different type yeah. of parent and kid. Sure. Well, and it's at this point, right? So, I mean, that's safe yeah. to say, say, I mean, expectations yeah. and reality aren't they aren't matching up jake no they're not yeah they're not jake how are you doing over there i'm good uh, are jake, you jake, jake jake is focused on ernie else are you I'm good <laughs> are you locked in on locked in. He's locked so in tomorrow on hey now just for planning purposes for the show tomorrow we we will have the tvs on i'd prefer to yeah. have them on when i come in yeah they'll be on okay yeah jake <laughs> Um, on when he gets uh, here, it's demanding. Demand. He would like a cup of coffee. Is uh, the coffee is he ready when he that. gets here? Hey, he's hey, like, Shafe, he has coffee hey, ready for. Hey, him. he's like those. You ever hear those superstars that when they're doing like their concerts? Oh, I want just only yeah, the, the green room re request. Re right, yeah. only want red and yellow M and M's, yeah. and I want the room temperature at seventy two degrees. That's it. God, that is a little bit me, and definitely the superstar part. <laughs> um, I am okay. sort of demanding. All right, we gotta get out of here. Uh. For Mike Schaefer and Steve Sippel, I'm Jake Sorton. <laughs> Old school's next. See you. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round 